Well, it's a good morning. It is a good morning. Hope everybody's doing well. So we are going to be discussing kind of like a uh, maybe a preview of what to expect going forward. We're two weeks away from the ICT live sessions that will be conducted on my YouTube channel. And I kind of like want to build in the proper expectation, also ringing in how you as a viewer or listener or new student would take in this information to build a model, how you should properly build a trading model, and how to avoid the pitfalls that most traders and like myself when I first started years ago, how can you avoid those types of things and put the most positive forward momentum in your development and your learning and try to avoid all the things that are going to be pitfalls and snares. It doesn't mean that even with my guidance that you won't have periods of confusion, you know, doubts, you know, misunderstandings, or doing it wrong. But that's part of growth. And I want all of you to understand that you know, this entire year is going to be filled with a mix of emotions for you. Right now, you're excited. Okay. And that's understandable. And I'm excited for you. I'm excited. I can't wait to really get started. But I just retweeted a folk, uh, one of the people that follow me, one of the followers, said, uh, doesn't seem I'm too enthusiastic about doing the mentorship. I've been mentoring since the 2nd of January. <laughs> Nonstop. So uh, you're looking for the live sessions. They'll begin February 7th, 2023. And you, you'll be able to see the charts and not just see tweets me talking about specific things. So the title of this is uh, your, your Blueprint to Successful Trading. And if you're new, you actually have a unique perspective. That means you have not been tainted with all the things that this industry, unfortunately, pushes on students, um, t turns them into gamblers most times. And then when they fail, they walk away from the industry thinking that no one's able to do this consistently. And that's unfortunate. But consider your successful trading, your successful endeavor as a trader, much like a home, okay, a new home purchase. And when you're sitting down with someone, maybe you're going to a home builder. And before I've moved into the home I'm in now, my wife and I considered going to a builder and having them draw up plans for us and do lots of things. But unfortunately, like you all listening, all around the world, the supply chain has been a major factor in costs. So I went with a existing home. My wife fell in love with it, and it is what it is. I'm happy with it. There's some things I wish it had. But your system is going to always have those things too, even when it's profitable, even when it's a beautiful piece of financial real estate in your life that can generate income, you're always going to have these things that you wish it could just have this amenity, this addition, or if it had this type of feature, you know, it could do a better way of exiting. Like for me, my trading, one could argue it's consistent. Yes. Sometimes it's highly precise. Yes. But my wish about my own system, my own model, is I wish my exits were better. And you're going to have that same thing throughout the year. You're going to wish that you knew more and the things that you learned, you're going to wish you learned sooner. But why waste your time with that? That's what I had to do with my wife. I wanted the master bedroom in the home I'm in now to be larger. I compromised and she wanted the home, so I bought it. But that's one of the things in this home I wish it was better. So that's human nature for us. You know, we're always going to want something better. The grass is always going to look greener you know, on the other side of the fence. So I want you to make sure that you're aware of that going through this year under my tutelage because there's going to be times where I'm going to do nothing. I'm going to sit still, maybe on a live stream, have no real clear indication of what I would do as a trader and take that as, well, that's your invitation to be Still, to do nothing, because you don't want to take risks blindly. Just like 
going and trusting a builder. You don't go to a builder and say, build me a home that I'm going to like. Okay. That's what most of my students that have never met me or ever worked in the marketplace at all. They'll come to me with the expectation. They'll say, I heard you're good. Tell me how to trade. Give me a system that works. And I don't want to lose money. I want it easy. And I want you to teach it to me quick. Right away, I want those types of people to go somewhere else. Because I already know from history that I can't fix that. So if you are like that right now, this is one of those invitations to get yourself properly aligned with my style of teaching. And I'm okay with it not being conducive for you to learn from me. There's other ways to trade. It isn't just my way of making money. But if you're wanting to learn how I can time these things precisely, and you've seen illustrations of that with executions and such, and you see my students doing it, and you see them making money, don't come with unrealistic expectations. Just like going to a builder and saying, build me a house I'm going to love. What are they going to do? They're going to say, well, can you sit down with me and give me some, some features that you're looking for? You know, what type of house do you want? You want a rancher? You want a craftsman, something Victorian? Uh, we settle on a colonial. So our home is a colonial. Your trading system, it needs to have a structure. It needs to have something that you know is the reason why you're going into this and in potentially incurring risk. Because if you do this with a funded account or your own money, you are in incurring risk. And that risk can be damaging. You can lose more than you have. And it needs to be made aware right from Jump Street. Right when you first begin, you need to know that you're embarking on an endeavor that will absolutely cost you money. You're going to lose money. It's going, it's going to be a transaction, whether it be by me inspiring the idea or you taking it indirectly from your own opinion. There's no guarantee of those things being profitable and you will incur a losing trade. And that losing trade will force you to wrestle with the idea that is the model you're trying to implement profitable at all? Is that house worth living in? So you have to know what you're looking for before you even start this. And blindly following my commentary over a live chart or in a Twitter post, it's foolish. And some of you are posting your winning trades based on the things I'm saying in those tweets. I don't want you doing that. You're placing undue stress on me as the mentor because I'm not trying to teach you to follow copycat me. I'm teaching you how to read the tape and you're cheating yourself. So I'm today sitting down like the builder. I'm the architect. You came to me, you're in this space listening and you're probably listening to a video that someone else uploaded on YouTube because I don't want these on my own channel. And you can get them to bother with making sure that the subtitles are correct. <laughs> And why, do I, why don't I put them on my channel? Because sometimes I go ratchet ICT, and I don't believe I'm going to be there today, but sometimes I go off the rails, and I don't want that on my channel. So I use Twitter for that medium. But I think we'll be pretty much focused today on what it is that you should be gleaning in terms of a blueprint for trading. But as the architect, and you come to me wanting a high-performance trading methodology, a way to go in and time the market with precision, go in and take surgical strikes, get in, get out. I can present that to you. I can present it to you in a multifaceted presentation. I can also strip it down to its chrome like today. How can you make money? We're going to talk about that. What little do you need? We're going to talk about that. What things aren't important? They will be the things that are not mentioned in this presentation today. It's not to diminish them. It's not to say that those things aren't helpful, that they won't build up the results. I'm just saying for someone that's new or to build the proper expectation of where we're going this year, how to start. I'm going to present these live sessions in a manner that if you're new to me, and you don't have the time or not inspired to watch every video on my YouTube channel, I'm going to take you as 
the person that came to me like when I was in the 90s. When someone came to me and said, hey, can you sit down with me and train me how to do this? They had one week with me. But prior to that week, I gave them three months of things to look for. Show me in the charts the types of moves that you're inspired by. So I let them pick the structure of their home. Sometimes they wanted things that were outside my personal preference, which is long-term trading. I don't have the appetite to do that because my mind changes constantly. So that's why I do well as an intraday trader because I can adapt to that. You may be a little bit more lethargic. It takes a lot more for you to change your mind about something, and you're more prone to be successful in long-term venture like position or swing trading. All of my concepts work in that. All of my concepts work in Forex, obviously you've seen many of that, uh, futures, commodities, and stocks. So it's, it's, wa it's wide ranging in terms of what you can utilize it with. I just don't personally say anything about crypto because I've never traded crypto, but people obviously that learn from me report that they do well with it. I can't co-sign that because I don't know very much about it. So I, I try to avoid it. But you come to me and you want a system, you want a methodology, and you have the burden of deciding what you should be doing because your personality is going to dictate that. I can't make you, as much as I show example after example, I can't make you grow comfortable with interday trading if it's completely against who you are as a person. If it's too fast-paced, and it is for some of you. And some of you are going to try to wrestle that and try to overcome that when the real focus point should be learning how to read price action on the lower time frame examples in the lectures I'm going to give you and just simply take that same mindset and apply it to a higher time frame chart because it's the same thing. The same elements of what I'm going to show you in one, two, three, four, and five minute charts, the lowest time frames that technical analysis and, and in this industry would scoff at and say it's noise, I'm going to demystify all that. I'm going to show you how to read all that real time. And you're going to grow more comfortable with trusting your positions once you know what you're looking for and how to just relax and let the market do what it's designed to do. So that way you're not wrestling internally thinking, I don't know what the next few candles are going to do and I'm scared. Versus this is what it should do, and I want to sit here and watch, and does it continuously give me the feedback I'm looking for to trust the outcome to be favorable for me? There's a total different perspective. There's a paradigm shift that takes place, and it's only going to be seen and observed over the chart. See, I'm giving you a test drive with the tweets because that's one way of also showing that it's not delayed in data. It's not cherry-picked. Well, I guess it is cherry-picking, isn't it? You know, I'm picking the winners, right? But – you're going to learn this year how to do this independent from me. But you're going to have to show up and you're going to have to decide what house you're going to live in as a trader. What's the style? What's the structure? Are you going to be a day trader? OK. Are you going to day trade the full daily range? Is that going to be your model? Trying to get near the low on a bullish day and hold for majority of the daily range? Or are you going to break that up into two sessions and say, OK, uh, my work schedule my life commitments, my sleep schedule dictates that I can't trade the New York session, Michael. So what should I do in that instance? Uh, well, I think that you should probably trade London. There's moves that take place overnight between 2 o'clock and 4 o'clock in the morning. There's setups just like when I teach in Forex. Just because I'm not hammering that in the 2022 content and thus far this year, don't think for a moment that you cannot trade the same London kill zone that I teach with Forex, that same thing exists in futures. Overnight session is overnight session. When those individuals over in London, in Europe, they, when they wake up, the market's not trading because you know, it hasn't happened here in the U.S. because we're still sleeping maybe. No, it's working. It's, it's, it's rolling. It just means that when I'm teaching you the New York session, we have the benefit, the advantage 
And plus, I'm really liking the fact that I don't have to stay up at night. <laughs> I'm getting old. So the whole point is, is you want to have every advantage in your favor. And New York session has that because you have already the hardest part of the day behind you, which is in Europe and London. What they do overnight that establishes a lot of things. And we'll talk about that. I'll talk about it a little bit more in this presentation as well. But don't think for a moment that I'm trapping you and, and painting you into a corner that you can only trade during the New York session. You don't have just that limitation. You can trade in the afternoon session between 1.30 and 4 o'clock. You can strip it down even further if you're an intraday trader and you're comfortable with making these types of ideas and opinions and studying the charts with that mindset. You can strip it down to the last hour of trading, 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock, and that's your entire career just a handful of them, or maybe even one per week. I have housewives all over the United States that are students of mine now. And they have reported, you know, obviously, you know, staying home moms, they get ridiculed a lot you know, from men. They say, oh, well, you don't do anything, woman. You're just going to tell, you know, tell the kids what they got to do, mind the home. When I come home, make sure my dinner's on the table, clean the house, and everything will be fine. Like they don't have a responsibility, like they don't have things demanding their attention. It's not like it used to be where women can just sit around and watch soap operas. You know, the, the world is constantly moving. And to run a home today with children demands a lot of energy, a lot of time. And they still, just because they're home and you're the breadwinner, gentlemen, you're out there collecting the money. Don't think for a second, if they're doing what they're doing as a student here learning, that they have all the advantages of extra time because they don't. Children have to be maintained. The home has to be maintained. They have their own personal things that they want to do, as they should. So everybody's competing with time and how to make this fit in their personal lives. And you need to find that. You have to pick the structure of your home as a trader because you're going to live in it. I am around homes that some of them are actually way larger than the home I'm in now. Some of them are actually much nicer than the home I'm living in right now. And I don't mind it. I don't look at their home just like you shouldn't look at someone else's trading pattern or model or results and say, I wish I slept in that room of that house. I wish I could park my car in that garage. I wish I could drive that car that he has in his garage. See, by doing all those things, that shows discomfort in what you're doing. I never, I never look at someone else online, whether it be their results, whether they're doing some live streaming, or whether they have won a competition, whether they've done really well on a leaderboard, whether they've done uh, statements. Or I've never looked at someone else and said, wow, I feel like I'm not significant enough. And you shouldn't do that either. Because what that's indicating is, number one, you're, it's a character flaw. And many of you, many of you are going to bring that into this trading endeavor. And it's going to cause you to not want to stay with the things I'm going to show you that will lead to consistency and continuity and eventual profitability if you submit to it. But if you quit or if you are distracted easily by this is something that's going on over here. So this person did something that may or may not be valid as the reason why the market went higher or lower. But because they've taken a, tr a transaction, they've put on risk, and they show the champion trophy of their win. You don't know how many trades they've taken before that one. You don't know if they've been correct. But that's the one you're going to see, and you're going to be convinced that that's enough of a distraction to stop what you're doing here and go chase that. And I have lots of students have done that. Over the years, even when I was teaching on America Online back in the 90s. So you have to wrestle and guard your mind. If you're here, commit to the full year. Don't come in casually and think, well, you know, it didn't really teach me how to make money you know, in the first three sessions. And uh, you know, I'm just going to pack it in. It, it doesn't work. It doesn't work for you. You didn't put the work in. So that's why... You know, have I'm sorry, you don't have a excuse if you are going to come in on a part time basis here. You have to be 100 percent committed 
I'm going to give you my full year. What are you going to bring to the table? Are you committed? Are you going to you know, really put conviction behind the things that you're doing while you're training with me this year? Because if you don't, you're not going to get the results you're looking for. And you won't hit the mark that I'm guaranteeing you by the end of this year, you will be able to read price better than anybody else is going to be able to teach you. That is not me saying that you're getting rich. That's not me saying that you're going to make money every single day. I am promising you that there is nobody out there teaching. Zero. Absolutely zero. There's no one teaching you what I'm going to teach you this year. You're going to see it. You're going to test drive it. You're going to be built up in your confidence, but not to be overconfident, not to be arrogant. I don't want you as my community, as my student base, to go around with pitchforks and torches and tormenting other people because you are learning something that is different, obviously. It's trailblazing, but it's the real market. And it's empowering, yes, but it's, I'm not empowering you to be trolls. So also be, be respectful of other people because a lot of other people out there are making money. And they're not doing anything that I'm teaching. They've mastered themselves. They're comfortable in the house they live in. That's the house they built for trading. They don't care what their neighbors are sleeping in and driving and how they park their cars in their garage. They have something that they're comfortable with. They're not trying to keep up with the Huddlestons. <laughs> the expression is, is trying to keep up with the Joneses. There's a lot of people out there. They know me, but they're not influenced by me. They care less what I'm doing, what I'm not doing. If I make money, if I don't make money, they're making money. They're minding their business. I have a lot of respect for those types of people. When I see that, I push them. I, I promote them because they're, they're proving to the industry that they're profitable. They sit out there. They do it in front of people, and they're respectful. They have nothing really to say bad about anyone, and they're having a good time. And that's what I tried to do the other day with Patrick. And unfortunately, some of you, you know, may or may not, I'm not convinced that all of you are students that were doing that, but you don't want to distract yourself. So keep the focus on what it is that I'm teaching. And that way your mindset is not being drugged to a different direction. So much like a home, when you sit down with an architect, the architect will say, hey, what type of things do you want in your home? Or what type of things do you want in your trading? Do you want to be able to pyramid positions? Or do you want to just do one and done? Get in and they maybe take partials along the way. Okay, that's an amenity. You're asking me to show you how we can build your house in trading that you're aesthetically pleased looking at it outwardly. I want to be a day trader, Michael. Okay, let's sit down and let's work it out. How, you wanna, how do you want to trade? What is your, what's your model going to be? You have to bring that to me. You have to put that to paper. You can't let me or anyone else dictate how you're going to trade because I and no one else can take you and press you into satisfaction about being in a home or a model of trading that you really don't like. If you're not comfortable in it, it doesn't matter how many other people are trading it and making money. If you can't be comfortable in it and live in it, then it's useless to you. And if it's, if it's a source of agitation and frustration because it's not really what you wanted, you won't pour everything into it. Like when you have a home that you love, you'll pour more money into it. You'll invest in a, a new paint job, you know, keeping up with maybe a new carpet every couple of years. And if the, while it allows for it, maybe in an addition, a swimming pool, something else. All those things are factors that come with you being satisfied with what you're putting your work behind. You, you, you love the home you're in. That's what you have to be as a trader. You have to love the home that you're in as a trader. You're not influenced. You're not going to be influenced or feeling like you don't have enough. You got to be the king of your castle. Mind your own business and be the king of your own castle. But what castle are you going to live in as a trader? You have to know what those things are. And unfortunately, it's a source of frustration for new students and new traders because you don't know what you don't know. You don't know where your strengths are. And you don't know where your weaknesses are. 
that's what makes this industry hard because 90% of this is you wrestling with yourself because the charts are going to go up or they're going to go down. And if they're not doing either one of them, they're going sideways. And that's a simple thing to measure probabilities. Is it likely to go higher or lower? Or based on the economic calendar, when's it likely not to do much at all and go sideways? So you have three decisions there. But those three decisions are going to push you if you have a weak minded perspective on risk, it's going to make you impulsive and you're going to chase moves and do things that are going to be outside of a model. So you have to know what you're asking of me as a mentor and what you're placing demands on yourself to follow. I've had so many students over the years come to me and say, Michael, I want to be a scalper. Okay. Why? And they can't tell me. It's because I want to make money fast. And I'm afraid to lose money. So I know getting in and getting out, you know, I have less risk of losing that way. No, you don't. <laughs> that's, that's not true. Okay. Uh, if you think that it's less risk day trading than any other style trading, that is too myopic of a view. You must, absolutely must understand and accept the fact that as soon as you enter the marketplace, as soon as you enter that market, whatever market it is, based on whatever time frame, whatever methodology, whether it be mine or someone else's, you have relinquished control over your finances to the outcome that you have no control over. Think about that. Because I have continuously harped on that. And a lot of you tend to have selective hearing and you don't want to hear that. You think there's, oh, there's, a, there's a secret advantage and there's an order block. There's a fair value gap that's going to help me you know, minimize that type of thing. No, risk is always there. Always. And you have to be comfortable with that uncertainty because it will visit you. Drawdown will come home and visit you. And how long you let it stay in your home is up to you. How much time being uncomfortable are you willing to absorb? That's also a factor when building a model. Because if you're going to be a long-term position trader, for folks that are listening, when you have periods of drawdown, you have to be comfortable living in that for a longer time. Because long-term position trades, they don't happen every day. They don't happen every week. So... That's another advantage to me because I would not be comfortable holding a period of drawdown for weeks and months. I, I wouldn't, I couldn't, I can't tolerate that. It's, it's, an, it's an intolerable experience for me. I can't personally endure that. That doesn't mean that you couldn't, but that's a factor that unfortunately most books and teachers don't really address and they're paramount for someone that's, just becoming interested in doing this because first of all, you need to be commended because number one, you don't have all your marbles. If you want to do this anyway, you're not on, you, you, you're not on the, the list of, you know, folks to have uh, <laughs> you know, reasonable risk tolerance. You're willing to assume more risk, even though you don't want to lose, you're willing to, to face that. But unfortunately the first time you get out there, and you lose, that tells you who you really are. And that many times separates you from this industry. And if it happens to you, unfortunate as a trader, yes, but fortunate that you have learned your lesson early and you don't pour yourself into it and lose more money when you know it may not be something that you can do. And there's no shame in that. There's people out there that can help you if you can't execute. There's people that can manage your funds for you, but you have to be demanding of them. Show proof. You know, how are you going to risk? You know, how do you manage risk? But I'm pouring everything into this this year. And you have to show up every day. And I will build your house with you. But you have to bring those expectations that are reasonable to me. You can't expect a mansion from a rancher. You can't expect you know, 
Ferrari performance with a Ford Pinto. And unfortunately, that's many times what happens when I have brand new, never been in the marketplace, never experienced it at all. They come to me and they think, okay, well, you're supposed to be the professional, so therefore give me a system that never, that never loses, that never has drawdown, and I'm always going to be right, and I'm not going to be tricked into doing something and manipulated and have my stop loss hit. I, I'm not that guy. I, I'm looking for him too. <laughs> I'm out there looking for him. They, they don't exist, folks. I mean, you're, you're going to have to be comfortable with uncertainty. You need to embrace that. That's what trading is. This lifestyle because that's what this is. I don't call it a career. I call it a lifestyle. You have to embrace that. And it's fun. It's fun. It's like treasure hunting. And if you sit down in front of these charts and you don't feel that passion about like being on a treasure hunt, like you have the potential to do something extremely difficult. But if you follow the rules of a well-sounded and formulated approach that manages impeccably the risks. This is really fun. It's really fun. And the outcome could potentially change your whole entire life. In both senses of the term, it could be good or bad. But the potential is there. So in the home that you're making for your trading, there's different rooms. There's certain rooms that you use for certain things. In my trading, if you were to use an analogy I've been using this morning, uh, my home has several rooms. I have the great room, which would be considered like the main entertainment room. Then I have sleeping areas, and I have the downstairs where I have a home theater and other things that you know, I use, and I have a workout area and I have storage areas. Each one has its own main function. To get to those areas in that home, there's doorways. That's what a PD array is. You may not use certain rooms in the house like I've had many times in homes that I barely enter in, to, in any of the certain rooms. I just don't have a reason to be in there. So they get used very little, infrequently. You want to have a home in your trading that you're using frequently. Because much like a home that's not lived in, it tends to wear down and that becomes dilapidated. You don't want your trading model to be that way. You only want what works and yet you're using. So that way you want something that's lean, not fluffed up. And that's unfortunately what many of the people come to me, they think, wow, you know, look, <laughs> look at all these videos ICT's made. Like what is, what the hell am I supposed to do with all this? Where do I start? Where do I start with all this? And I know it's a little intimidating, but I'm passionate about teaching everything I know. And everything I know takes time, and I want to build on – I don't want to half-ass anything. I, I'm not lazy, and I'm demanding my students not to be lazy. And unfortunately, lazy folks have very poor opinions of me because they don't have the, the wherewithal to do what's required to learn properly under me. But when you see – how I really teach and how I actually trade and how my students are trading, all of those things, all those video series, all those episodes, if you will, they're introducing you a component, one cog in the machine. That cog might be in that video series, that particular video, that lecture, that moment where I say something and show something that's been a hindrance to you that you have not been able to go over and pass through in your understanding, something happens and boom, you have an epiphany. Suddenly everything clicks and you know exactly what has been holding you up and now you can move forward. That's what the purpose of all those lessons are for. They're for my children. It's a record for them in case something happens to me. They can hear me as their dad tell them, this is what I want you to do, son daughter, grandchildren. These are things that I've learned and I think are going to be helpful to you if you adopt them. But I also state many times, and this is the, this is the trap that ICT content produces, because I have so many weapons in my arsenal, so many rooms in my home, 
in the doorways. I have many doorways in the areas in my home. I have many doorways in my trading methodology. I have different strategies, which is a room in my home as trading. But I have multiple access points to those rooms. I don't have just one doorway. That's an entry technique. I can use a breaker. I can use an order block. I can use a fair value gap. I can use a mitigation block, institutional order flow entry drill. I can buy the stops or I can sell the stops. That's many ways to get into something. What's the purpose of that room? When I'm buying something, I'm going long. I'll use some strategy of many. But once I'm in the trade, if I still have room to get to the other side of my home, which is that trading model, that's my terminus, that's my target. Okay, well, I can, I can get to the other side of my house through different ways. In different ways, it would be like me pyramiding more entries based on what the, what the market is presenting me. Not every trading price run is going to have a breaker in it. So if you're only looking to try to take trades that have a breaker, you have nothing to do. And you need to be comfortable with doing nothing because your model isn't telling you to do anything right now. Not thinking, well, Instagram guys are saying that they should be buying. So, you know, I missed that move. What am I doing wrong? You're doing nothing wrong. Except for watching other people trying to do what they're doing because they're following their own model. Don't get tricked into thinking that influences, even myself, don't think for a moment that I'm saying to you in any particular day when I'm doing something that that's the only way of doing it. It's, it's not like that at all. And that's why it's important for you to spend time here and see different results by different students because they're all doing something different using everything I taught. And many times they're going against a trade that I would be in and they're still profitable. How's that possible? How's that possible? If ICT is going long, the market has to bend to his will. For, but think about it. He's right all the time, right? That's what, that's what you're coming to me with. That's, that's the false sense of security that you're adopting. And I'm trying to remind you and shake you and say, no, you're going to see me do it wrong. And it's okay. It's okay. There's no reason to be alarmed by being wrong. That's part of your model. In fact, we're going to talk about how you have to build in allowances for that. Because if you don't, you'll be ushered out of this industry expediently. Maybe not as politely as you'd probably hope, but that will be the end result if you don't master yourself. But don't try to apply everything that I teach. That's the, that's the problem. That's the problem. When people come to my content, they listen to my lectures, and they see, okay, he's all over the place. Well, yeah. You go and you watch a painter. I, I don't paint. <laughs> but if you're watching, there was a, a gentleman years and years ago. He's, he's passed away now. Uh, Bob Ross. Okay. Guy was just chill, laid back. You know, I used to turn, you like to sleep with me on your YouTube channel. Like, if you want to go to sleep, put a long video on by ICT, and I'll put you to sleep. It's a lullaby. OK, I, I got no problem with that. I used to put Bob Ross on when I couldn't sleep. I would just watch him and, and happy little trees and he's painting. I'm looking at him. I'm thinking, OK, he's painting. Most of the time, he's only using a fan brush or that small little detail brush or the big wide brush. There's three there's three paint brushes he used predominantly most of the time. And I know some of you are like, what the hell is this? I think I keep talking about Bob Ross and paint. Think this guy's a professional. He's got a blank canvas. That's what your chart looks like in the morning. The hard right edge, that is a blank canvas. And most of you are staring at that thing like a deer in headlights. You have no idea what the hell's about to happen. But a professional that understands price, we are expecting art. We're expecting a beautiful delivery. And we're going to engage based on what that chart does. And at the end of the day, our aim is to have a Picasso, something that we're proud of, that we engaged in. Bob Ross, the painter, he doesn't know if when he takes that brush and pushes it onto the canvas, he doesn't know for sure the delivery of that paint is going to be exactly how he's hoping it will be. That's why he has to make adjustments and tap, tap, tap all over the canvas and do more adjustments and make the thing 
come to fruition. And at the beginning, you have no idea what he's painting. You're confused. You're like, uh, okay. And then suddenly, he does a little bit more with just three paintbrushes. All of a sudden, you see something. You see mountains. You see a lake. You see you know, whatever it is he had in his mind he wanted to paint. And he, at the end, you're like, wow, I didn't see that coming. It's beautiful. But he has all these other paintbrushes. But he goes to these certain tools, these certain three brushes, over many of the other ones. But if he has a purpose for reaching for that other paintbrush to do a specific function, a small little detail, he wants to go in and highlight a certain area of a tree or a rock or you know, the light reflecting off of the water, that's what a volume imbalance is for me. It's just another tool that I can utilize to justify holding on to a trade. If it's supporting price and I'm long, great. I'm looking for it to do that. It may go through it and come back above it and bullish. And I want to see it now. Does it respect that volume imbalance again or for the first time? I'm looking at it. I'm reaching for a paintbrush that's not required for me to do the trade, but it's supporting the idea. I might not enter on the breaker. I'm waiting for a price run and a fair value gap or a institutional order flow. That's a paintbrush. It's going to be used if the opportunity presents itself. But I'm not going to the marketplace. I'm here, guys. I have all my breakers, all my mitigation blocks, I have my fair value gas. I'm going to force all of this on this chart today. I'm going to press it all on there. You're going to have a mess. And that's unfortunately what neophyte traders or casual Netflix type ICT people that come here and just watch or listen to me and they think, okay, you know, this stuff doesn't work because there was no breaker today and look what the market did. Okay, look what else it provided you, an opportunity. I can get in the market after the market runs halfway. I can still go in those moves. I have tools for that. You're gonna learn those things this year and it won't be chasing price like everybody else will say. It's chasing price. You're not chasing price. If the move's gonna move, 50 handles, and it's already moved 30. Are you afraid to buy it still? I'm not. I'm not. A winning trade is a winning trade, and you don't know what that is yet. You don't know what you don't know. And once it runs up a lot, don't think it can't keep going. And there's rules that I'll teach you throughout this year. When should you not do it? And when should you risk it? But understand that there's a higher level of risk there that all needs to be managed. So what's your model going to be? What's the home that you're building? Are you a scalper, a day trader, a swing trader, a short-term trader, or a position trader? I'm not doing any of that decision-making for you. You need to decide that. I teach day trading because I like day trading. But also as a teacher, it allows me a great deal of experience in a short period of time. You'll know right away if my stuff works because I have daily examples of it. I'm calling it on Twitter so you can see it in your charts real time, right when it's happening, and then watch it pan out. And it's fun, isn't it? It's really engaging, it's fun. That's, this is what trading should have been for me when I first started, but I didn't have this. So I'm trying to be the Mr. Wizard and for folks that are of the child of the 70s and 80s, you know who I'm talking about. But Mr. Wister, he would, he would do these little experiments with his, you know, his kids on the TV show he was hosting, something scientific or whatever. And it'd be fun. I loved it. I'm trying to do that with you because I know if I show you where the market is right now and where it's going to go next, and you watch that thing unfold day after day, week after week, and it's very precise – you will be confident that you're in good hands. That's, all I, that's the major hurdle for me as a mentor. And that's the major hurdle for you when you're starting to learn how to do this because you're going to doubt everything. Think about it. When you go to buy a house and you work with a builder, you don't know if these people are going to do a good job. Sure, they might have references. Oh, yeah, this person built this house. It's great. Okay. But they haven't built your house yet. So... Reviews and opinions by other people are going to influence you early on, and that's why I do what I do. I show you proof. This is precision. This is where it's going to go. This is why it's going to happen. So that way it, it will be able to be leaned on 
when the times come when you think that the lessons are not working for you, like you're not getting the results as quick as, and, and as efficiently as you were hoping. Like you want to learn how to do this in three weeks. I'm telling you, you're not going to. You're gonna, it's going to take you the full year. And some of you, it's going to require you to do the things I'm going to teach you and go into a little bit more of next year before you really get it. Some of you, it's been with me for a long time, that have been on the fence with wrestling with some of these things I've talked about thus far. And they've been a hindrance to you. You just don't know what it has been for you specifically. It's causing you not to get through that threshold that's needed for you to find consistency with it. You'll find probably the first month or two, it'll happen for you. And it, it, I've, I've already seen it with my private students. When I was doing private mentorship, which I don't do, I'm doing mentorship openly now, so stop asking. <laughs> the, the students that were you know, held up in their learning, you know, just what I've been showing on Twitter, calling it live, you know, tweeting out, this is what it is, this is go to that minute candle, watch it here, and it's gonna go here. That alone, as simple as that was, it pushed some of them, now they're funded, now they're making money, and they've been with me since 2016, unprofitable. And now all of a sudden, just because of some tweets that I put out, real time, they see it now. Something happened, the veil was lifted, and they're able to understand what it is that they've been looking to do, but never really understood exactly what it is. And I'm not ringing in all the tools that's, that's possible to be utilized that you hear me teach and talk about in certain videos. Like if you look at the uh, trading plan series, that's a lot of videos. It's a lot of stuff in there. It's meant to take you through the process. At th those videos in the orders that I put them out, that was literally, that's literally how I came to be Inner Circle Trader. It's been a whole social media experience for me to try to create another me doing the very things and presenting the very things that I came into understanding in the order that I came into my understanding with it. And I haven't seen one person do it yet, which, I, you know, to me is interesting. I wanted to see if I could create that laboratory experiment where these are the ingredients <laughs> and then boom, powder puff ICT, you know, version two pops out. So I don't view it as a failure. I just, it's been very interesting to watch what has transpired over the time me teaching this stuff, but you can't take that whole series like the trading views uh, development series and think, okay, I know everything now. No, they were just ideas to start implementing and give you some kind of framework to study. And then another lesson comes another idea, another specific element about price action. And how you as a trader can engage. Where does that thing usually manifest in price action? What time of day? What day of week? What year? Yeah, there's yearly cycles. What seasonal tendency of a year is better than others for what certain type of price delivery? That's seasonal tendencies. They exist. They exist in stock market. They ex exist in commodities. I'm sure if crypto lasts long enough, you'll see... Seasonal tendencies manifest there as well. I don't have any horse in the race in that. So I, don't, I keep my hands out of that cookie jar. But your model, you need to de determine what that is. And I'm giving you the framework to try to do that this year. So you need to create that model independently and uniquely on your own wants and desires as a trader. Don't do what you see me doing. Because uh, I've had students come to me and say, look, you know, I can see what you taught last year on Twitter. I'm sorry, not on Twitter, but on YouTube. The 2020 model, the fair value gap, the shift in market structure. I can see it after the fact, but I, I just can't do it live. I can't see it happening. And they're frustrated. So they think there's no other way besides that one. That's not true. That's not true at all. There's other ways to trade. I'll show you them, but I'm going to try to work with the 2022 model predominantly and the slight variations in that model that you will see that you probably didn't notice from the lessons I gave you last year. But I've been trading a lot with that model intraday. Even after the moves start, I'm still using that model. You just can't recognize it yet because you're not familiar with it. That's all. That's all it is. It's a new language you haven't learned yet, and it takes time. And it's boring in the beginning. That's why I'm doing all these 
types of discussions because the students that are really here to learn, you're here listening and you're taking notes. The people that are going to be casual, they're not going to be profitable. They're not going to learn no matter how much I do live in front of them. As soon as I stop doing the commentaries, they'll never find a, a winning trade. That, that's who they're going to be. Th that's not who I'm talking to. I have a, a, a certain group of students that are hardcore. They really want to know what's going on and how to overcome themselves and learn how to read these markets like a book they've read 20, 30 times. You know the plot. You know the characters. You, you probably can say verbatim what the next line is going to be in the next paragraph because you've, you've been here before. That's what experience does. And in the hands of a lay audience, when I show like what I've been doing with Twitter, it seems magical. But you're going to do the same thing. And don't be prideful about it. Don't build yourself up like you're something special because all I am is blessed. And I'm trying to share this life skill with you. And I want you to be responsible with it. So you have to define your, your trading model. So let's talk about defining that. What is the market you're going to trade? To keep it easy, to stop all the arguments, and also to keep my focus, which is important, it's, it's important and it's imperative that you keep your focus when you're first learning. I'm choosing to trade only the Standard & Poor's 500 S&P. But I don't want to trade that. I don't care what you want to trade. I'm here teaching price action. Take these lessons and apply it to whatever market you want to trade after we get through this year because it all is the same. But I want to trade the Dow. You don't trade the Dow. I just said I'm only teaching price action through one medium, the S&P. If that doesn't fit your expectations, go somewhere else. I was fine before you came here. I'll be fine after, and I promise you, you'll be fine without me. You'll probably do something else and do very, very well, and I wish you the best of luck with it. But I'm not going to have it your way mentorship, okay? <laughs> it's not going to be like that. I know how to do this. I know how to teach it, but I also know that to keep the questions to a minimum, to keep the distractions to me as a, at a minimum, I'm only using one canvas, and I'm going to show you what little paintbrush selection you need the paint of Picasso. Now, I can't paint worth a shit, to be honest with you. I, I can't, I, I don't know how to do, I can draw. I can draw very well, but I can't promise that every single time I sit in front of the charts with you, that it's going to be a Picasso every single time because I'm going to fall victim to manipulation, uh, manual intervention, and I'll tell you when it's likely to occur so that way you can see that sometimes forecast, you can forecast when it's going to happen. And or I will fall victim to it and then you'll see me exactly as I teach you. OK, we have now shifted to a, a period of time where it's not favorable for me to do this and I'd be wasting my time doing what we're doing right now. And I'll close up shop and say we'll resume on this session on this day. And you need to be prepared and be comfortable with that. Because you're going to do that same thing in your own trading. Just because you sit down in front of the charts, the market doesn't owe you shit. It doesn't owe you anything. It doesn't owe you your setup. It doesn't owe you your pattern. It doesn't owe you your R multiple you're trying to get. And it doesn't owe you your fucking FTMO leaderboard position you're trying to aim for. Or that your account is going to make, you know, move over to some new stage. Like you pass the funded account. Like it doesn't owe you that. That, that's, a, that's a major hurdle for new traders. Nobody owes you anything. You have to work your ass off for it. You have to earn it. And it's not going to be easy. And when you think you accepted the fact that it's going to be harder than you probably thought it was, then when you're met with the reality that it's really harder than you thought it was going to be, that separates you from traders that are going to be here and endure it. Because if you give yourself enough time You'll find consistency and consistency, consistency and profitably consistent isn't mean every day profitable. But your model has to define what sound logic you're going to adopt. So you have to start with one market. I'm forcing all of you. Don't ask me about euro dollar. I'll talk about it in daily commentaries on a daily chart. I'll tell you where I think it's going to go. That's the draw on liquidity. I think that's where it's going to likely go. You have to use everything I've already taught. 
to submit to, does it reach there? I'm probably going to be right. I'm probably going to be wrong. I don't care. My focus is predominantly in ES. And you only need one market. You only need one market. Because if you know what you're doing and you're trading well with sound logic and read price action correctly, your attention is dialed in. Laser precision. You're not distracted by anything else. I don't care what Bitcoin's doing. I don't care what crude oil's doing. I don't care what the British pound's done. I don't care. I sure as fuck don't care what Yen's doing. So all those things are a distraction to me. I don't care about those things. I don't care what that other guy on YouTube's doing. I don't care this new book just came out. They're all things that's going to distract me. I have a I have an agenda that I have to follow this year, and I have to be disciplined. And it may sound like I'm all over the place, but I'm literally, I'm literally reading bullet points. So I'm, I'm on focus. I'm not down rabbit holes. I know exactly where I'm going, and I know where we're going as we get through this discussion. But if you're already feeling uncomfortable, I guarantee you, you're not going to do well here. If you're impatient, get to it. <laughs> get to it, Michael. Like uh, uh, Tom Hogard, uh, I reached out to him the other day. A lot, of, a lot of you have said, hey, you know, have you seen Tom? I, I messaged him in private. I said, uh, yeah, I, a lot of my students have mentioned you. And unfortunately, with all due respect, I, I've never heard of you before. But uh, I've watched a couple of his videos over the last week or so, and I just ordered his book. So I'll be taking that and digesting it when I get it. But uh, he, I, I believe... I believe he was referring to me in the 26th uh, presentation. He does like a commentary over the charts, much in the same way I do with uh, Twitter, but he's doing it like, I think audibly sharing it live. And uh, he mentioned that, you know, I do tend to be long winded and he's like, okay, you know, get with it, you know, get, you know, get to where you're going. Unfortunately, that is something I try to, overcome because I, I want to make sure I'm efficient, but I care more about making sure I am satisfied with the level of content that I'm producing. I, I, don't, I don't really care if people think I'm long-winded because they're not going to say, well, that was a half-assed approach to teaching something. I know what I'm saying matters because you're going to refer to these things I'm talking about at a later time. And then you're going to go back and listen to a video and listen to a, a lecture and say, damn it, he said that shit and I didn't pay attention to it and now I'm dealing with it. If I just would have listened to it, had it in my notes and referred to it, have it in the forefront of my mind going in, these are, these are hurdles. This is someone that's been doing it for 30 years. I lost a lot of fucking money, folks. I lost a lot of money doing stupid shit. Do you want to go through it too to learn the lesson? I mean, think about it. Do you want to learn that way? And because that's what everybody else does. All I'm trying to be is a conduit so that way you don't do those things. I'm not promising you're going to get rich. I'm promising you're going to work your ass off. But you do the things I'm telling you to do, you could. You could be seeing what these young men and women are doing all around the world right now with real money. And that's undeniable. And I'm not hand-holding them. So you have to have your focus and you have to tolerate being taught correctly. And when you go to college and you listen to these people, and they may be up there teaching. and may never have ever done anything in the field that they're doing, they're lecturing and teaching on. How many fights do these boxers and their trainers, how many, how many trainers have those fight managers, those, those trainers, how many world titles did they hold? There's an argument that's being constantly perpetuated that if you – Teach, you can't do. I'm proven I can do. I'm asking you to be responsible as a student and filter out all the bullshit. Because you're going to see if I know what I'm talking about right away, if you haven't already noticed. But your limitation and distractions, I'm managing that. I'm also managing my own as a human being. I'm not AI. I'm a real person. I'm easily distracted. I'm easily pissed off. I can fly off, you know, well, you're now hearing it, right? That's the mood shifts that I have to wrestle with all the time. And in the marketplace, you'll have that. 
you won't see that manifest in me doing live sessions. You'll never see me go off the rails over the charts. That is absolutely when I'm 100% disciplined. That took 30 years to get that. You're never going to hear me. Oh, this son of a bitch. That's never going to happen. I don't look at a result that's adverse in the marketplace, whether I'm in a trade live or when I'm in front of you calling it and it does something else. I'm never going to hear, you're never going to hear me go, oh, for fuck's sake. That doesn't happen because I know, I know me, I know my model, and I know that what I'm doing will repeat. So there's no fucking reason for me or you to get into an emotional response to what the market's doing. There's absolutely no reason for that. None. Because as soon as you do that, as soon as you do it, you have now recorded in the annals of history in terms of you as a trader internally, that's a bad experience. And you're going to do everything in your power to avoid that again. That means what? Pushing the button. You're going to, man, I don't want to take another loss today. I'm down 5% because I didn't listen to sound logic and say two losers and stop. So I'm managing at the, at my best. These are the things I'm, I've thought about this over the holiday break. How am I going to manage all of you? How am I going to manage all your personality f flaws and characters that are impulsive with a clean conscience I'm doing everything I can, but you still have the responsibility of not pushing a button while you're learning how to do this. The worst thing that can happen is if I get up there and I call something that I believe firmly that the market's likely to do and it doesn't deliver and you push the button, you got a live trade on, you're going to determine that as the, that's the reason why it doesn't work. And I shouldn't learn from Michael. I shouldn't even worry about this stuff. I need to go out there and start trading, trading and supply and demand. Elliott Wave or whatever else that catches your eye. And that would be unfortunate because one trade, one transaction, one week, one month is not a narrative for success or failure. But as a new student, a new trader in development, it's easy to establish rather um, an opinion based on not enough evidence. Because you're, you're going into this with a great deal of skepticism, and it's healthy. That's normal, and you, I'm encouraging you to be that way. I want you to be that way. I don't want you to believe me because I fucking make a video and record myself doing it. I want you to sit with me. Sit with me and watch me talk about every one-minute candle. Because every, every single one of those candles, even as small as that is, that one-minute candle has a storyline. It's telling you something. You need to be understanding real time when I'm not going to be doing this. By experience, you've seen it. You've walked it before. You've been down this road before. You know where that Rottweiler is. You know in the hole in the fence, if you get too fucking close to it, it's going to rip your ass apart. So that way you had experience, right? So that way you walk down there, you know I'm going to cross the other side of the road. It doesn't mean you're weak. It doesn't mean you're scared. This means that that's stupid. I'm not walking over here and tearing up this fucking nice shirt I'm wearing. I'm not tearing up my clothes. I'm not getting all tore up. That's experience. But some of you just want to walk down the road and get your ass tore up and say, yeah, I did it too, ICT. You know, look at like the, like the scene from Jaws. Everybody's showing their scars. Or, this is the wound I got. Well, look at this one. I got one better than that. Trying to keep up with the Joneses. Fuck the Joneses. Carl Jones is the person you're trying to avoid. You don't want to be friends with him. If there's a Carl Jones listening, it's just fictitious. <laughs> it's, just, it's just for comedic uh, relief here. Carl. Carl's always trying to get the employee of the week. That's the, that's the person that's always trying to one-up somebody. Okay, that's the, that's the person you don't want to be in trading. The guy that does something better, the guy that knows something more, that has more experience, has this. You, you, you don't want to do that. Okay, nobody gives a shit about that, and that shouldn't be your motivation by learning. So I'm managing all these types of things that I've had endured over the years as a mentor, and I'm forcing all of you to look at one market. And I know that it's going to alienate some of you. And I'm asking you to be considerate to the idea that I am doing my best to teach you price. The things that I'm going to show you in this one market 
they occur in Forex. So if you're only going to be a Forex trader and you can't trade futures, that's fine. This stuff works there too. If Bob Ross was painting on somebody else's canvas with somebody else's brushes, he'd still be able to paint the way he can paint. I'm teaching you how to paint in these charts. That way you can see these things pan out and work with them. It matters not what the, the instrument is. Some of you may like, oh, you know, I'm going to be trading crypto and I'm going to be using it. OK, I'm not co-signing that. But if that's where you're going with it, that's that's on you. I don't have any experience in it. That's why I don't talk about crypto. That's why I don't trade it. I'm never, ever going to get up there on a live stream and say, this is what, no, <laughs> I'm not doing that. That's not my forte. My forte is futures. That's where I started in 1992. And then I segued into Forex. Forex right now, look at this week. For some of you that are arguing and um, you're angry at me right now, you're cussing me right now. This son of a bitch, ICT. You said you was going to, I said I was going to do Analysis every day, Monday through Friday on Forex. Yes, I did say that. I did not say I was going to sit down in front of you and call the shots on Forex every single day. I'm not, I didn't say that. I said I was going to do that with the stock index market. Yes, that's what I'm selling in on. You'll see NASDAQ come in where it's useful. But I'm going to only talk about the setups in E-mini S&P. Why? Why are you holding back from us, ICT? I'm not. I'm giving you every advantage of doing everything the right fucking way, and you just got to trust me on it. Trust me. That's all I'm asking you to do. Didn't, you didn't send me a PayPal payment. You didn't swipe any fucking credit cards with me. I'm sitting here on my weekend pouring myself into you. I'm never going to meet you. You're not going to shake my hand. We're not going to have dinner. You're not going to be introduced to my wife. My kids are not going to spend time with you. I am showing you the greatest consideration that anybody else would do for free. Don't come to me and say, fuck you, ICT. You're not doing it the way I want. Go somewhere else. Go somewhere else. You want to learn how to make a lot of fucking money? Show up every day. You want to learn how to control yourself in the markets? Show up every day. You want to learn how to manage drawdown and come out of it? Show up every day. How to avoid when the trades are not likely to pan out? Show up every day. But I'm only going to be able to teach that effectively with one market. Look at Forex. Look at – I've told you what I believe was going to happen. I told you exactly what I expected to see happen in dollar index and euro and cable. I've only, only been partially correct. Now, contrast that with the laser-guided fucking precision that you've been seeing me do with ES daily since the beginning of the year. And you're going to ask me why – Am I not talking about Forex? Is there not a better picture been ex you know, explained than that? If I know what my, if my personal precision is going to be off, if I know that I'm going to have adversity in trading an instrument, why the hell would I go in there and try to trade with, 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 with money? Why would I do that? And why the hell would I want to do it publicly in front of you, right? That's stupid. That's asinine. But I understand that your infancy coming to me, you haven't been doing it long enough. You think that I should be pulling signals out of my ass with euro dollar and pound dollar every five fucking seconds. And that's not how it works. That's not how this works, folks. There has to be a reason to do it. There has to be a reason to be expecting high probability conditions. And if you don't have a way of defining what that is or knowing what it is, having experience engaging in price with that, then it comes to the surprise that you have people saying, well, you know, I'm disappointed because you're not doing Forex. I'm thankful I'm not trading Forex right now. I would be frustrated right now because the market is shit in Forex right now. Compare it with what I've been showing you in the E-mini e S&P. That's beautiful price action, folks. That's exactly what the fuck you're looking for, but you don't recognize it yet. You don't even know what you're looking at. That's exactly what you're looking for as a trader. A trader sees this market, and it says it's going to go up to this level, and it's going to come down to this level. It should respect this level, and it should go here next. Not all over the fucking place, chopping this wild price swings. That means nothing. But you're going to see these jokers. 
on social media showing their 25 executions on MT4 in the same instrument with $27,000 supposed profit next to it. Those people aren't on the FDMO board. So why the fuck are they messing around there? If you can do that, do it on those funded accounts and do theirs. The, but that's the shit you fall victim to. You like that stuff. You want to see that shit because you think that that – because it makes you feel cool. Like, man, if I could do that, man, I would be respected by people online that don't give a fuck about you. They don't care about you. So you're, you're trying to chase things that are not going to deliver what you really want. I don't give a fuck who likes me, who believes me. I don't care. I'm doing what I want to do because I like doing it. I'm living my life. I'm in my own fucking lane. As a trader, that's what I'm trying to do. And when you do this and you're trying to make money, that's all you're doing it for. That's it. If you're doing this for any other reason but to make money, you're fucking off. You're doing it wrong. You're doing it absolutely incorrect. Because if you're doing it for other things like pride, ego, status, clout, guess what that's going to do? It's going to invite you into trying to perform better than somebody else that has the hot hand right now. And right now I have the hot hand. And then you see all these other people that are coming at me because they're insignificant. They're not happy in their home. Because if they were happy in their home, they would still just be doing what the fuck they're doing, and people would recognize that and appreciate that. Hey, you know what? You're not getting caught up in all that drama bullshit. You're still just delivering. You know what else? That's why I tapped that guy, Patrick Wyland. Once in a while, he talks his shit. You know, he's a character, and that's cool. I can appreciate that. I'm the same way. It kind of makes – it breaks up the monotony. But when it comes time to push the button, the man's pushing it, and he's showing that he makes money. Not every day. I've seen him – you know, give up some, some losses here and there. I mean, we'll give up some wins, but he's pushing it every day in front of people that sometimes are talking shit. I can't do that because it's a distraction. I want to smack them in the face with a sledgehammer when I see shit like that. I want to show them they do nothing. And, but if I do that, it's taking my attention from where? The charts. So that's why when you see me doing live sessions, I'm not going to have the chat window open. I could give two fucks what your opinion of me is. I'm literally reading the tape. That's it. OK, and when I'm done this year, you can criticize me and write all the reviews and talk all the bullshit you want to talk about me. But you're not going to change the fact that these motherfuckers all around the world are making money now. And they did the work. They showed up every day. So back to my list. So you need to know what what market you're following. I'm forcing the S&P as the teaching medium, understanding that everything in that is going to be applicable to everything else. And what style of trading I'm forcing day trading in the morning session. I'm forcing that on you. Well, I don't want to do that. It doesn't matter because the same things I'm teaching you, I'm going to teach you how to apply to every other time frame, every other style of trading. I'm not going to effectively be able to teach you long-term position trading. Think about it. Like, okay, here's, here's the daily chart. I'm, we're going to take a long here, the stop here, and we're, we're expecting it to go to. How long is that going to take? Who the fuck knows? I don't know. I don't have time. You're going to, you're going to wait to the next video update for that? Hell no, you're not. Some of you are chomping at the bit. You're constantly looking at Twitter. Am I, do I have my notifications on? Because I know ICT should be talking some shit right now. You're, you're already wired. You're already hardwired to do what I'm training you to do. So roll with it. So the morning session, we're going to be focusing on that. So what time frame are you going to trade in? What's your model going to be? I'm forcing you to use the weekly expansion. In other words, I'm going to walk through. And I'm going to constantly remind you each time we do a session what the weekly expansion is. So that sets the tone for where's the largest magnitude of volatility in what direction likely to be. It doesn't mean that there isn't going to be moves that go against that throughout the course of the week. It just means that I want to be where the gunpowder is. Like I want to be in there putting in trades when it's likely to go to fuck off and just run explosively. So when I'm sitting on the weekend, like I'll do tonight, once I, I'm done doing my fatherly and husbandly things with you know, my family, and when they go to sleep, then I resign myself to my office, and then I pour over my charts, and I'm looking at specifically the weekly chart. And I, I spend more time on that weekly chart than I spend on any other time frame. What the hell did you just say? Dude, we don't ever see you talk about a weekly chart. We only see these one-minute one candlestick, right? 
And that's what I'm talking about. See, you only see the result of 30 years experience being shown to you real time. But you aren't there when I'm putting in the time over the charts, studying and looking for the things and weighing out things with my own personal experience, logging and journaling in my own journals. All those things, that's what gets me or has, re has allowed me to reach the level of precision that you see me doing. And it didn't happen overnight. It wasn't a quick thing. And it's not going to be quick for you. And I'm not trying to sugarcoat it. I'm telling you up front. I tell you every time in these videos, you're going to fucking lose money. It's going to be harder than you want it to be. It's going to be easy to want to quit. But you have to dig your heels in and just show up. You have to show up. Because when you start trading with real money, should you ever decide to do that, you're going to have times when you start going in drawdown. You're going to lose. And you need to make decisions, and they need to be rooted in sound logic. What's the next step if you go into drawdown? Another trade, same risk, more risk, no stop loss. You have to have rules. You have to have a process to manage yourself because unless you manage you, it's over. It doesn't matter what system you're using. It doesn't matter who your guru mentor is. It doesn't matter if ICT can turn other people into profitable students. If you fuck up and you go off the rails and you don't follow the processes and the rules I'm going to lay down for you, you're going to blow it. And who's going to get the fault for that? You know you're going to blame me. You're going to blame me. But everybody else that's making money and has found consistency is going to be saying, no, you're full of shit. So you're not even going to get the outcome you want there either. That's why when I when – I, push this in the videos, you know, I talk about it in these lectures, okay, these are the parts where you, you got the message, you understand, but there's a lot of you that don't. And I am not going to be guilty of not at least pushing the idea that this is risky shit. I'm not oblivious to that, but some of you are. And I need to make sure that you understand, if you do things half-ass, you are going to get your ass handed to you. That's the way it works in this business. You can't, you can't sugarcoat it. You can't. I can't. As a teacher, as a mentor, I can't do that. It would be unethical. It would be irresponsible for me to sit here and try to make it sound like everybody walks in here and we all get rich. Man, if it was like that, I would love it. It would be great. But unfortunately, the reality is, is that's not true. You're going to have to work really hard for this. So you need to decide what time you're going to trade. And on that weekly chart, I do my top down. And then I get myself to a point where inside of a specific element of time in the day, I'm looking for one and five minute entry techniques to deliver on a 15 or an hourly framework. So that's why I can take a trade that even though it's on a one minute chart, I'm getting five to one, 10 to one, 12 to one are multiples on a one minute candlestick chart. That's it. Very, very small risk. Now, don't fall in love with the small risk because I'm going to teach you how to be responsible and not try to get these really, really small stop losses in the beginning. You will learn that this year. But in the beginning, it's irresponsible of me to try to paint this. Watch, I'm going to get you in here and we're going to use two handle stop losses. I'm going to show you how you can do that, but be responsible in your expectations going forward. Because in the beginning, it, I'm not doing a crash course on laser-guided precision with ultra-slim stop losses and mega R multiple profits. That, I'm not promising you that. I'm showing you how to read the tape. You're going to be able to find one good setup per week. That's my guarantee. One good setup. But that's not getting me rich, Michael. If you take that one concept and apply it and multiply it over and over and over again and use sound money management, that same pattern exists each day. But you have to discover what it means to be disciplined and say, okay, I don't know what I'm doing. I need to control myself. I need to pace myself and not expect to be able to do this every single day as a neophyte. A neophyte comes in with a great deal of fear of failure. How do you conquer that fear? Do what you're supposed to do one time for the week and stop and then just observe the rest of the week and see how many times you would have got it wrong after that, but safely on the sidelines without committing anything with your demo account. Oh, you're talking about demo. You need to learn in a controlled environment. You cannot learn this risking real money. You can't. You cannot. I don't give a fuck who tells you. I don't give a fuck how much money they made, and they're trying to teach you that. I don't give a fuck. 
Because as soon as you equate the outcome of an experiment or a laboratory study or case study in price action, it only is favorable if it makes you money. If you're learning like that in the beginning, you are training yourself, you're teaching yourself to worry about the outcome monetarily. When the whole function should be, is the market delivering price exactly as I'm expecting it to do? Because once you place the protective stop loss on and you have already mapped out where your partials are going to go and where your terminus, where the end result is, the goal of your trade, I, I don't give a fuck what the outcome is in terms of money. I, when, I'm doing, when I'm doing my partials, I don't have it calculated. I'm, I'm going to make this much on that first partial. I'm going to take that. I'm not doing all that math. I'm looking at the chart. The chart says this is what the price runs likely to do now. Where's my stop? This is where my stop's going to go. Okay. How much is it in terms of the full range? I'm looking for a minimum of 10 handles. If it can't offer me 10 handles, I don't give a shit about that move. Why? Because I'm teaching you. Not that I can't go in there and find three handles. Like every, every 15 minutes, I can pull out three handles. You want to see me do it this year? I will. The point is I'm teaching you, you, that person that doesn't have any experience. I'm showing you how to go in, be comfortable, not be scared, not have anxiety about what the hell you're doing or what's going to happen. They're going to stop me out. There are certain segments of the, do, of the time in intraday price action on the daily range where factors are very favorable for you to go in and manage risk responsibly and have a reasonable expectation that the market will likely do a specific thing. That's why I teach the way I do because it's algorithmic. These things should manifest themselves in price. And if they don't, it's good for you to be out of it, be stopped out, and be done. Go to the next session or don't trade the rest of the day. And some of you already are communicating that you don't even have the discipline to not pull the trigger when I'm calling these moves now because you're trying to make money and you're doing it wrong. You're absolutely fucking doing it wrong. At the end of the year, when I'm no longer doing this and you didn't learn what you should have learned, you're going to be back at square one, scared shitless because you're going to do a couple trades on your own. They won't pan out and you're going to think, oh, they changed the algorithm. ICT shit's finally been mainstream. Now it's the new retail. It's not going to be the fucking, fucking new retail. It, I'm teaching you the market. I'm teaching you how the market's book price. It is what it is. It isn't going to fucking change. It's not going to diminish. It's not going to – if anything, it's going to get better. As technology becomes more advanced, the precision elements, the static bullshit that you see in certain times of the day, that's going to go away. It's going to be smoother. I'm excited about the fucking future. I'm not scared it's going to stop. But I understand how it feels. You found the goose that lays golden eggs and you just don't want it to die. Listen, <laughs> even when ICT's gone on to greener pastures, this shit's still going to be working. And I'm going to be echoing your mind every week, every day, and it won't stop. When are you going to stop trading? Your model has to have that. You have to know when are you going to pull the plug and say, okay, I've lost enough today. And it might be just one trade. That's your threshold. That's it. I'm done. I'm not going to allow myself to go into a period of mental drawdown, which is much more expensive than financial drawdown. Because financial drawdown is finite. It's, it's limited to what it is. But when you have a losing trade or a series of losing trades, how many times does that fucker haunt you? I can tell you and think about things that I endured in the 90s that just the mere mention of them or reading that journal causes me to have anxiety because I can relive that moment. That's why journaling is important because it takes you right back to that moment right then and there, and you can relive it. It's not like these jokers on the social media. Uh, you know, I'm going to tell you a trade I took today. I think I got in over here. Get the fuck out of here. Get out of here. If you took a trade, you're going to show us where the fuck your trade entry was. You're not going to think, oh, uh, I was in, I think I was in around here. I think I did, uh, I don't know how many contracts. Get the fuck out of here. But you're, you're wasting your time listening to these people. You're listening to these jokers. You need to know when to stop. Stop listening to ICT. You've, you've watched enough videos for today. When are you going to stop your trading? When you make money, 
Are you stopping? No, no, no. No, 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 no. We can't do that. Shit. We still got the afternoon session. I'm a 5G's, baby. 5G's. It's the easiest fucking money I ever made in my life. I'm going to double it. Oh, I can't wait until 1.32 o'clock. ICT said that the next move happens then. And I'm going all in. Texas fucking hold them. ES style. We're going all in. And you get fucked on the turn. <laughs> River card, your history. See you later. Because you don't have limitations. You don't know when to stop. When's a good thing enough? That's why I presented that series, Ends. If you've listened to me and you've adopted this mindset, you're going to get rich real quick. That's the, that is unfortunate. Because I want you to first master yourself. And it's going to take you a year and a half, two years, really, to do that. It ain't this 30 days to replace a bad habit. Fuck that. Let me tell you something. If it was that easy, I would have been a whole lot better sooner. This is something totally different. You have never done anything like this. Ever. Ever. Because as much as other people may troll me because I don't do what they want me to do, dance for them the way they want me to dance, to the tune they want to play, fuck them. You do what I do. That's all I'm asking you to do. And it costs you nothing. All you got to do is put your calls out there live. Where it should go, where it shouldn't go. But you have to know where your limitations are. Stop. You make money? What's enough? Where, what is your rent payment? What is your mortgage payment each month? That's where you should be focusing. If I could just get half of that a month. Listen, listen, folks. Nobody's writing a fucking book about this. Nobody's going to do a, a teaching series like, like that. I did. And you wonder why this industry is plagued with so many failures. Because your expectations are too high. You want Olympic gold results on every fucking trade. And that's not realistic, folks. And you expect it to be daily. And that's not realistic either. The flavor of the month right now is I want to make $100,000 a month. That, well, that's certainly commendable if you can obtain that. But is it realistic for me or as an educator or you as a new student to think that you can walk out here in your first year doing that? I never do that kind of fucking shit. I don't ever promote some unrealistic threshold that you should strive for. 6% a month is going to be hard for you in the beginning. So what happens if you only make 1% a month? Is that failure? Fuck no. Some of you don't know math. Like you lose sight, like you, like you forget rudimentary math. You're all wanting to get these funded accounts. I want to be funded to 150000 Unless it's 150000 it's not worth my time. Oh, yeah, you're fucking mine. Like, if you literally have any equity, any, you can trade micro and build that up. It's going to take you more time. I'm not going to argue that. It's going to take you more time. But it doesn't matter if you only get a $10,000 funded account. If that's what you get, that's what you get. You can work with that. And don't fall into, I'm $2 million funded. Okay. It's become a measuring contest. Like we're all pulling our dicks out to see who's got the longest one. I'm going to sit over here in my lane and say, none of you motherfuckers are going to be as precise as me. So measure up. I don't need to go on anybody's leaderboard. I don't need to do any of that stuff. So don't get caught up in all that. You're here to learn how to make money. That's it. That is it. There's nothing else to this industry except for that. And have fun doing it. Control risk and have fun doing it. Be passionate about it. But you also have to know where you're going to pull the plug and say, I'm done. I've made enough for today. I fulfilled my objective. You have to have goals. 
There's people out there that are going to say, don't fucking have goals. Have goals. You have to know what it's likely to reach for because here's what's going to happen if you don't. You're going to be impulsive. You're going to chase price. You're going to react to price instead of anticipating price. I can't fucking stand it. I can't fucking stand it. When I see and hear people say, don't have goals or expectations in the marketplace where it's going to go. How the fuck are you going to fucking trade? How are you going to fucking trade? Seriously. You're going to put a trade on and not have an expectation where it's going to go? How the fuck does that even make sense? Don't have goals. You got to know where it's going. What conviction are you placing behind the idea that you're incurring risk on if you don't have a fucking goal? If you don't know where the market's going to go next, reasonably, how could you possibly expect to be profitable? You might as well just flip a fucking quarter. Heads you're buying, tails you're selling, right? Some of you newer folks are like, this guy just lost his fucking mind. No, I'm, I'm absolutely passionate about you know, what I'm doing and what I'm teaching, and I see this nonsensical bullshit promoted online. It should be fucking criminal. You should be fucking penalized for shit like that. How else could you possibly measure progress, understanding, and learning if you don't know where the market's going to go next? Why are you pushing that fucking button? Why are you inviting monetary loss, emotional distress, stress, anxiety? You're inviting that on the basis of what? A fucking indicator that said it's overbought? Who says it's fucking overbought? That squiggly ass fucking line only crunched numbers back 14 bars. Who gives a fuck? 14 bars on a weekly range is nothing. When the market's going to reprice higher on a level that's established on a weekly time frame, your overbought and bearish divergences aren't going to mean shit. It's just going to keep repricing, and you're going to get mad. But my indicator, but my teacher said, this indicator said it's going to go down. The divergence is there. Fuck that divergence. It's not there. You're right. It's not there. The algorithm doesn't give a fuck about the indicator. It doesn't even realize it's even there. It's not calculating anything on your, on your indicator bullshit, your harmonic fucking triangles and bullshit you lay over top your charts. None of that shit matters. None of it. So you have to know when you're going to do a full stop, pull out all the stops, you're done for the day. You're done listening to ICT. You're done listening to the bullshit. You're done trading. You have to have limitations and, and thresholds that you're not going to cross. That discipline has to be forged early on and continuously honed in this lifestyle because it's easy to get caught up in the, the mania. Thinking you know more than you really did. I fell victim to that as a 20-year-old. I thought I had everything fucking figured out. And then the market showed me I knew shit. Fuck all. I knew nothing. And I arm wrestled it. Oh, yeah? You want to blow that account? Watch what I do with this fucking account. Oh, yeah, you did great. You just fucking lost that one twice as fast. Beautifully done. Let's see if you can do it again. And I did. <laughs> did it deter me? Fuck no. Because if they took it from me, that means that they made that money. And I was going to be on that side. That's the side of the game I was going to be on. So when you lose, do you take that as a personal defeat? And you're like, fuck, I'm going to end up quitting this soon. I don't. I'm like, okay, that was a good move on the chessboard. But I still have pieces. I'm taking your shit. That's the way I think. That's the way I think about this. Every move on a chessboard, sometimes you're going to lose a piece. That's just the way it is. But as long as you still have pieces on the chessboard, the game's still on. But many of you don't regard the level of risk. And you think, okay, well, I, I lost a little bit there. Uh, you know, my daily max loss is, you know, I'm only halfway there. I just can't go home with a losing trade. I got to get it back. Let me just go in here and try to do it one more time. I, I won't use a stop loss this time because I'll be worried about getting stopped out if I put a stop loss. 
So therefore, let me go in there and just do it without stop loss. And I'll do it with three times the leverage I just lost on because then I only need a small little piece. I don't even have to be much correct in terms of where it's going to go now because I'm doing three times the leverage. And then you shit yourself. Your maximum loss is hit. You lost your funded account or you blew your account. What are you going to feel like when that happens? That's a hard pill to swallow because it's completely avoidable. As soon as you think that you got to fix it, okay, listen to me. I picked up a rule from Larry Williams when, as a younger man. It, it, it really is so true. When I was coming up as a trader in my 20s, in 1993, when I was going in with a little bit more understanding but still knowing nothing, I – felt that every time when I was right and I was in positions that were being, making a uh, profit and I was, they were unrealized profits, but they were in positions that were paying me, you know, my increase would be gone and I was holding them overnight. So I was trying to be a swing trader then I wasn't day trading initially. So I'd put a, a trade on and I'd have to wait in agony all day long while I was working, worrying about every fluctuation of price. And I'm panicking all day long, constant panic. It's going to turn on me. It's going to turn on me. It's going to turn on me. No, no, I had no idea what I was doing. When I was making money, then I hadn't closed the trade yet. As soon as I grabbed my calculator and on the road when I was delivering candy and soda machines and stuff, that's what I was doing at the time. I had a little Casio calculator watch. Back then it was a big deal. And I would pull up on the calculator. I said, okay, I got this many contracts. And if it goes here, I'm already – Already showing the early signs of I should be getting out right now. And Larry Williams in 1995 made a course. And you hear me talk about this a lot, but it absolutely is true. He says you, you, you get this King Kong feeling like you got it all figured out and you're going to make so much more money. You don't stick to your trade goal. Now it's become a long term position trade. You're going to you're going to hold on to this thing for a year now. Originally, it was just going to be like a four-day trade. <laughs> now it's a long-term position IRA trade. Okay, You're going to retire on this one. And you think you're going to be making so much more money, and you start calculating all this shit. If it goes up two more cents, man, wheat's going to kill it for me. I'm going to crush it. That's the very moment. That's the very moment, that King Kong feeling, that moment. That is the surest sign that you should close your fucking trade and be happy with it. And a lot of that is how I do my, my targets today. So when I'm in a move, I know what it should do. If it's a perfect, perfect centerfold trade, it should do this level. And then what I do now is I cope with this desire to be perfect by saying, if I just get 80% of the move and I do that consistently more times than I lose, I have trained myself to accept that as above average, which it is. But to me, I wrestle with that. In my, in my mind, in my subconscious, I'm constantly trying to manifest perfection. In my entries, in my, my approach to getting into a move, you're going to see that. That signature is there because I worked very hard to overcome fear, which is what my son Cameron has now. He wants to trade. He wants to do well. He wants to impress dad. But I'm trying to tell him, you don't impress me. You make fucking money. You follow the rules and you make money. You control risk and you make money. That's it. But I was afraid in the beginning of taking trades. I was afraid to get in. I, I just was scared. I learned how to be a futures trader, I thought. And with no experience, I went into options and lost my fucking ass in the first trade overnight. So impulsiveness, knowing where the stops are, where's the thresholds for you? Are you going to be influenced by greed? Are you going to allow greed to be a factor in your decision-making process? You have, to, you have to say when you're going to stop. When are you going to say no more? Whether it be profitable, whether it be studying, whether it be taking a loss. You have to place those limitations in, and you have to stick to them. That's forging discipline.
If you don't do that, your broker's not going to do it for you. I can't do it for you. Your trading partner in life, they're not going to do it for you. You have to be responsible with that. And how much are you going to risk? This is the part that everybody loses their ass on. They think that you know, they can take big risks to fix their problems and their drawdown. And then all of a sudden it makes it worse and compounds it. And they blow their account, lose their funded account. And it wrecks them emotionally, psychologically. And that barrier is a long-term loss. That's the part of trading that isn't talked about enough. And I love listening to people have traded for a long period of time because when, they, when you really listen to them and when they open up to you, um, I'm gonna, I have a headset that I'm talking to right now, and it's telling me it's a low battery. So I'm going to disconnect the Bluetooth. I'm not sure if it's going to affect. I hope it doesn't. I'm going to continue on as if it won't. So bear with me. If I lose the connection or whatever, I apologize. But I'm going to go over to Twitter. You just give me a heads up if you can still hear me. You should be uh, you should be still hearing me. Do me a favor. to do damage to you emotionally. So when you listen to people like me or other educators and say you risk 2% of your traders, 2% is a lot. New traders should not be risking 2%. I think that you can make a lot of money risking one half of 1%. And anybody that says that you can't is full of shit. Now, there are people that can do really phenomenal things risking a lot. Larry Wins is one of them. Okay? Um, I don't think that that's something that a new trader should aspire to do because, number one, you already have a lot of other things to worry about. And if you learn how to trade and you can do things well, reading price action, over time you'll learn where your strengths are. You'll know the setups that you can really trust that are going to be runners. And that part is a knack. That's an experience thing. Uh, most of the questions that you see many new people ask me all the time, how do I know this and how do I know that? As soon as you see a question started with the framework of how do I know, chances are I'm going to 99% of the time say it's just a matter of experience. When you, uh, you know, I don't, very, I don't know very much about that guy, Tom Hogard. He's apparently, like, he puts on really big sides and takes on a lot of risk. One of the videos, the, the few videos that I've watched was one of him showing where he put up, uh, I believe the equivalent of 40,000. I'm probably doing a terrible disjustice to the presentation, but I only watched it you know, one time, and, and from what I gathered, he knew going in, and it was very responsible of him to, to articulate it in his presentation, that you know, he knew going in that he has the potential of blowing it out, but he was going to push it really, really hard. So like, he's a high-stakes trader. Like, that's Larry Williams-level type risk. Like, that, to me, that's anxiety-inducing. Like, I, I, I personally could not take that kind of risk on because the outcome of failing with it would be worse than the monetary loss. So the advantages of using money management to do all the heavy lifting, that's what I do. That's how I teach it. And every time you saw me run up the accounts, that's what I utilize. I wasn't doing crazy, crazy leverage. But I have a lot of respect for that type of thing because if you can do it, man, <laughs> like that's brass. Like that's – I can't do it, and I have no shame in saying I can't do that. I, I can't do world, you know, world poker uh, competition like these same people. You see these same faces that are willing to put big, heavy bets on. They have strong convictions. You're not going to talk them out of it. You know, unfortunately, and I think I don't know very much about the, uh, Tom, but I think he would be in agreement in this regard. I don't think that a new student that has no experience whatsoever should aspire to do something like that. And I think he communicated that effectively in his presentation saying, you know, this obviously is very, very risky and he's not promoting the idea that you should try to duplicate that. I can tell you, and I know some of you are probably already hoping this is going to happen, um, you know, I'm not going to be able to do that type of $40,000 risk and let's try to blow the account up to $400,000 in one day. Uh, you're not going to see that. I, I can't do that. I can't do that. But I can grow an account over a course of a month, two months, three months and have – 
really respectful returns. So again, you have to know where your thresholds are. You have to know what you're capable of doing and where your problem areas are going to be. Because if you lose money, the money is replaceable. It's very difficult to patch up a scar that comes from losing badly. Especially if you know going in, I should not be doing this. And your conscience is telling you, don't do it. You shouldn't be doing this, but you just got to scratch that itch. And as soon as you enter that trade, guess what happens? Regret. The loss is easily recouped. It's money. That can be made more of. But now you have that mental scar, that scar tissue that's going to haunt you for as long as you trade. And even if you stop, it's still going to be a source of pain. It's going to limit you. Scar tissue. It's not as flexible as your regular flesh. So when you stretch your bounds beyond what you're used to doing for growth, what are you going to be leaning on? All the good stuff you did right? No. No, you're not. You're going to be limited by the scar tissue that won't let you stretch as far as you would if you would have endured that painful thing. So you don't want to develop a lot of scar tissue, which is what I did in the beginning. I had a lot of scars that have still – they are still impacting me as a trader. Like I, I know certain things that I've done to myself that are going to be detrimental if I repeat them. And sometimes they manifest themselves in my decision-making and will either limit or altogether cause me to not participate in a move. And I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable with missing it because I'm not losing anything, but I'm not making anything either. So because of the scar tissue of doing things incorrectly as a developing student, trading before I should have with real money, and learning, I thought, with real money – when I had no idea what the hell was going on. I had no idea what price was doing. None. And I was in there trading 25 contracts of soybeans. <laughs> no, I was dumb. I was so dumb. I had no business doing that. So you have to have a real world grounded respect for risk, especially when you first start. And don't be ashamed to say, I'm going to adopt one quarter or one half of 1% risk, even in your demo. You know, punching these numbers in and doing 10 contracts and 40 contracts and 16 contracts and being mesmerized, hypnotized, if you will, that this is what's reasonable for you to expect as a trader. That's why when you're trading with a demo, you should only be trading with, even if they give you $100,000, Unless you're trading with $100,000 and you start trading with live funds, that's stupid to even consider. Trade with the smallest size that the, the exchange will offer, a micro. Trade with that. But it's, it's only $5 at CT. Who cares? You're learning how to read price. You're trying to remove the influence of the profit or loss because that doesn't limit the effects on you as the trader. The psychological impact of that win and loss monetarily has much more lasting effects than the short-term affliction that you place on yourself with drawdown or the mania that comes with uh, you know, doing something right and you walk around feeling like you're invincible. Because that moment that you think you've got it all figured out, you're very vulnerable. You don't realize it, but you're extremely vulnerable. You know that you just had a windfall victory. And you're going to ignore the fact that you overleveraged, you broke rules, but you're going to just say, well, I ain't going to bother with that right now because look what I made. And as soon as you share it on social media, that's it. It's done. You're going to keep going back to that post, see how many more people like your post. Hit net dopamine. And when it starts to wane and wear off and there's more trading hours in the day, what are you going to do? Are you going to look at that win that you got that was really not justified because you 
too much leverage in it. You broke every rule, but you want to feel good. Let me tell you something. You know what feels good? Knowing when not to trade and when to trade and only executing like that and being done. That feels good. That's fucking amazing. That's better than a Saturday night when you made it real, real good. <laughs> Fill in the blanks and you know what I'm talking about. There's nothing better than being disciplined and knowing what you're doing, why you're doing it. Even if you have a losing trade, it feels good because it can't take more from you. You limited how much flesh it can take off of you. There's only so much ass you can lose in this business before you're done. But you have to fight that desire to feel like, okay, that win was great. It felt amazing. I shared it on public social media. Everybody sees it. And I got to do the next one because I'm feeling my high wear off. What are you trading? Think about that. What are you actually trading? Your social media upload curve. And that's what everybody's trying to do right now. Fuck social media. All of you that are listening, God bless you for giving me the opportunity to talk to you and share my life experience. But ultimately, if none of you give a shit about me, I'm not losing sleep. I'm not changing my lifestyle because you like me or love me. It matters not. I'm pouring myself into people that are willing to listen to me. And hopefully I'm protecting some of you from yourselves before we even start this endeavor this year. But invariably, some of you aren't going to be saved. <laughs> You want the scar tissue, and once you get it, you, you, you regret it. It hinders your growth and slows you down. So I'm teaching you in a way where you have all the upside advantages, and I'm trying to minimize all of the carnage that is possible if you just let yourself run wild. There has to be a controlled, structured approach to doing these things, knowing why you should do it, when you shouldn't do it. And you have to know what those thresholds are. And you have to also place them in a limitation in terms of monetary risk. So when you're doing your demo and you're doing the case study that I'm going to put you in, I'm going to say, okay, in your demo, this is not an invitation for you to take a live trade. But in your demo, I'm going to tell you, all right, we're going to use this fair value cap or this order block, and we're going to aim for this, and we're going to use this stop loss. I want you to feel what it feels like to be in there doing that with no money. You can't make or lose anything from – nothing's going to leave your account. No money's going to leave. You're not going to miss your bills this month because you did something with real money. And you're not going to add more money to your bank account because you gambled. You're not going to learn effectively if you do it any other way besides what I'm showing you. Now, I'm asking you just to trust me in that. Just trust me because if you learn this skill set, there's no limit to what you can do with it. There's no limit to it. Sky is not the limit. And you can become a high-stakes trader if you want. If, you, if your risk tolerance allows for that, mine doesn't. I, I don't have that. And I can respect anybody that does. It's, it's, it's insane. But I can't, as a mentor in good conscience, not beat this over your head. Even when you think you've heard of enough of it, you haven't. You have not. Until you can exercise the discipline that's required, you don't know the you don't know the lesson from it yet. And hearing it's not enough. So the core tenets to high probability trading. Okay, when we walk into this in February, I want you to constantly be referring to everything we're talking about, the frameworks that I'm gonna outline, where I think the market's gonna go, and why it should go there, why it shouldn't do certain things. You want to be revisiting this list of things because these are going to repeat every single day. Number one, you need to, to know yourself. How are you going to undo yourself? You're going to ruin it. You are. Not these concepts, not Michael Huddleston, not the market, not the stock hunter. <laughs> You're doing it to yourself. You, so you have to know yourself and how are you are how are you going to ruin your progress? Are you going to be toxic about your observations? Only look for where it was wrong, or are you going to look at, you know what, I'm glad that this happened the way it did, and I didn't take a loss. I've learned from this. Because you don't, you don't learn anything from making money. 
No one's ever learned jack shit making money. The only thing they did was feel like they want to get another hit of that. That's not positive learning. That's encouraging you to do what? Gamble. I'm not a gambler. I can't gamble. I can't risk that because I will beat myself up forever if I do those types of things because that's exactly what I did in the beginning as a trader. When I, when I first started trading, I was gambling. That's what I was doing. I was taking a gamble on ignorance. I had no idea what I was doing. I was entering markets that could have absolutely decimated me, and it could have taken more money from me than I could have amassed, even with doing three jobs. And I didn't understand that risk. It was oblivious to me. I was the epitome <laughs> of clueless. That was me. And I'm thankful that I was able to skirt my way through what I was able to endure, and it wasn't worse than it was. So you have to know yourself. How are you going to rep yourself? Where's your character flaws? And that stuff needs to be understood. And don't don't hide from it. No, are you impulsive? If you're impulsive, then you need to start putting in more risk parameters and more boundaries for yourself. And that's a good thing. That's good medicine. As much as it doesn't taste good right now, that's a good thing. Because you want to be here when the news come, that it's easy. You're easy to see, easy to enter. They just run away from your entry and go right to your targets. That's the days that you want to be here for. But if you blow up, Pushing something really hard in markets that are shit, you don't give yourself the opportunity to do it. You're going to fortify your mindset with toxic feelings and experiences when I'm trying to teach you that that's part of this. You're going to lose. You're going to miss trades. It's going to stop you out, and you're going to have to live with that. That's what tr that's what this lifestyle is. Like you're you're managing that con constantly. Every trade you enter is a losing trade. Every single trade, every single trade that you enter ever is a losing trade. You have to trade your way out of it. You have to overcome the cost of commission. If you're trading for us, you've got to overcome that dealing score. And until you close that trade and cover all costs associated with it, it's not a win. So every one of us live a lifestyle of a losing trader, and we have to trade our way out of that deficit that every trade opens up with. And it took a long time for me to understand that. I felt that every trade is a winner. That's what we're told by the books. That's what we hear from ICT videos sometimes. It comes across as a message that you, know, you can't lose. Bullshit. Every one of my videos is laced with this stuff. You're going to lose. You are going to lose, and how you manage losing sets the stage for your ultimate success or failure because a losing trade is not failure. That's a tax on participation in the world's greatest fucking business. There's nothing better than this, folks, and you want to give every advantage to you and filter all the bullshit because there's no better way to make your own paycheck than this. If you can do it well, manage risk, how much can you make? I don't know. But whatever number you have associated with it, it's probably not high enough. That's, that's the reality of this. You can make far more than you can imagine right now. But you're going to have to incur losing. Can you endure it? Most people can't. They lose their mind over it. They have to have perfection. Or I can't go home with a losing trade. So you have to know yourself. you got to know your market. All the characteristics that you can build up in understanding what the market likes to do around the opening price at 930. What does it like to do on Mondays? What does it like to do on Fridays? How does the market like to behave in certain weeks when there are certain economic calendar events? All those factors, these, they're all characteristics. So that way you know your market. You can't fully appreciate that if you're trading 28 pairs in Forex. Every currency has its own little quirks and little characteristics that it likes to do. And I've, taught, I've done teachings on those, and they're in my YouTube channel, but we're looking at the ES. So the S&P 500 market 
has certain characteristics that I'm going to share throughout the year. And I'm going to tell you what they are before they happen in the marketplace. So that way you can know it's not contrived, it's not form-fitting and cherry-picked, and just said, here, it happened, so therefore I can make it look like I'm smart. No. There's logic that repeats. And you'll see it. You'll, you'll handle it yourself. And you, you'll come away knowing, wow, yeah, I can be really systematic about what it is I'm doing as a trader. And I won't be swayed by distractions and things that will otherwise undo me and prevent me from finding success. Because this is something that you can be successful in trades. As much as I like to hammer the realities of what real risk is with this, I honestly believe that you can do this. You can do it. You can absolutely find a way to have a secondary source of income in this, but it isn't always going to be profits every single time you go in. You're going to have periods where you, if you're making some, making some, lose, 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 dig into some draw down, but you're going to manage it. You're going to mitigate it, and as it's creating you know, a series of losing trades, it's going to take less from you. And you're not going to be rushed to get back. i got to get back to equity high. You'll get there. you got the whole fucking year to trade. Don't worry about it. That one transaction, that one week, that month is not your entire career. But it's going to feel like it is. But my friends on social media, they're going to ask me, show me my MyFX book. Fuck them. Fuck them. You owe nobody nothing. Nothing. You're trading to make you and your fucking family wealthy. More than you have right now. You define wealth. I'm not going to tell you what my definition of it is. But if you're making money above what you earn right now from whatever means you get income from, that's a source of income. Who the fuck do you owe explanation of what you've done with your trades? Who do you owe that? Fuck these people. They're so, in, they're so entitlement-minded. You owe me the fucking broker statements. You owe me a MyFX book. Fuck you. I owe you nothing. But just to rub it in your fucking face, I'm going to call the market every fucking day to the fucking infinite detail. Stick that up your ass. That's how you handle those jokers. Fuck them. If they're so worried about what you're doing, they're not satisfied with their own results. Because let me tell you something. I'm walking on fucking sunshine. I don't give a shit who's doing what. I don't give a flying fuck who's doing what. I don't care. That's the mindset you have. That's what you adopt. Fuck everybody else. There ain't nothing wrong with that mindset. You're minding your own business. They're not going to fucking run your business better for, for you if you share your results. And I, I guarantee you. Whoever you share those results with, some fucking joker, some fucking clown is going to say, I was expecting you to do more than that. Fuck off. Go back to fucking work on Monday, Dunkin' Donuts. Get the fuck out of here. So stop inviting these people into your development and letting them pour shit all over you in the beginning. You're going to be worrying about dumb shit if you invite other people's opinion. Fuck them. Fuck all of them. They don't matter. They're nobody in your development. Nobody. The same people that you're trying to influence or get acceptance from on social media right now, five years from now, when you're doing whatever the fuck you want to do, wherever the fuck you want to do it, you think you're going to remember these fucking clowns? Nope. <laughs> nope. But they're going to fucking remember you because they're going to see you, if you make it public, where you've gone. So if that's what you want to do, wait till you arrive. Stop bringing people into your fucking conversation and your development early stages because you're vulnerable. You're easily influenced. You're so influenced by – well, social media is very powerful. It's very effective. Think about it. You're here listening to me. Have you ever seen me sit on a live stream and trade live right in front of you? No. So how'd you get here? Word of mouth. Then you showed up. Then you studied a little bit. You see some things. Then you started watching me on Twitter. And then all of a sudden, this guy is calling every minor fluctuation in the marketplace extremely precisely. Yep, yep. That's, that, I'm that same guy that's been saying that I could have been doing this all the time. And I don't give a fuck who wants me to do what. I don't care. What affects me is when a student spends time with me and they fail themselves and they say my life's work is a fraud. When 
I know if they just would have pressed further and got through that threshold, that pain barrier of not seeing what you were hoping to see by the time limits that you placed on it, press into that. Whenever you have adversity in this, you need to dig your fucking heels in. I am not leaving. I'm not going to motherfucking place. This is just a speed bump, and this is something that's saying you aren't worthy, and I am fucking worthy. You're worthy. You are fucking destined to do this. You are absolutely – you ended up here for that very reason. You're, that's a testament. You meant – you're meant to do this. I didn't advertise. I didn't trick you with some fucking advertisement on Facebook or YouTube. I don't run ads. The testimonials are organic. It's real. And that's how you ended up here. So don't cheat yourself out of the opportunity to do this right. Don't fall victim to the bullshit that everybody else falls victim to. And that's knowing your model. Only operate in that. Don't try to tinker with it in the beginning. Stick to the things I'm going to show you. Only operate in that because you will get the foundational experience that's required to start adding on other things. You want to build an addition to your home? Well, you have to have a foundation before you have a home, right? And that's what this whole tape reading thing is. It's not about putting you in winning trades. It's about reading price, knowing yourself. How are you feeling about price? You're going to hear me ask that when I'm doing the live sessions. I'm saying this is where I think the market's going to go, and the market's going to gyrate around a little bit. Sometimes I'm going to put you in positions mentally, not in your demo, not in your live stream, but I want you to feel what it feels like. I'm going to be doing certain things that retail traders are going to be trying to do, and I want you to feel and then record it in a tweet to me while I'm doing the live sessions on YouTube. Tell me what your sentiment is. Don't be afraid to say it. I'm not judging you, and if anybody says anything about it, fuck them. Because I want you to feel what you will feel in the beginning stages versus how you feel at the end of the year. It's going to be a totally different paradigm shift that you're going to be able to relate to. Oh, wow. I don't even think like that anymore. But unless you press into that uncomfortable state of revealing it to yourself, namely, handling that experience, you won't overcome that anxiety. And that's how you do it. You press into it and see that it can't hurt you. Why? Because you're not risking any money. You have all the upside advantages. Learning how to do this correctly and not have any adverse uh, results of doing it and losing money. Because even if you lost $10 on something I call live, that's toxic. It feels like, oh, shit, all the rumors are true. <laughs> and you'll believe any little fucking unction that you get why you shouldn't do it. Ask anybody that makes real money, do they lose? Yes. Does it stop them from wanting to do what they're doing? Fuck no. It's Look, taking losing trades, that's still way fucking better than going to work for fucking whatever it is that you got to earn a job with. You couldn't pay me. I'm unemployable. There ain't a motherfucking company out there that could pay me ever to not do this. There's not enough money out there to say, if you could go back in time, the choice of knowing what I know today, if I had that benefit of knowing with foresight that I have that right now, and go back and say, here's the other career choice that you could do, and it's just a high dollar amount. It wouldn't be enough. And, and I'm being honest. <laughs> there ain't a fucking thing out there like this. Nothing. You can control when you do it, when you don't do it. Who says you can't take a vacation? When you want to take a vacation. Fuck that. Carl's position in seniority is not going to affect your fucking position on picking the, the week that everybody in your family can get off, but you can't get it because fucking Carl at your fucking job says he's got seniority. Fuck Carl. Fuck that job. Fuck that employer. You're carving out your own trail. But you can't run that trail and blaze it yet. So don't rush and try to act before you can really do it. So you stay with your model, your approach. You stick with it, and it'll provide you that foundation, that beginning base that you start building more experience on. Oh, I want to learn how to pyramid. I like what ICT does. You can't learn that right away. You have to first understand what's a high probability trade. What is low probability? Can you differentiate that? 
can you differentiate a high resistance liquidity run from a low resistance liquidity run signature yet? Some of you tweet to me and say, oh, this is a, this is a low resistance liquidity run signature, when it's not. I don't correct you. I don't say anything because I know right now some of you are so new. If I say anything, it's going to have a lasting impression on you, and it may be detrimental to your development. So I just leave it alone. I don't touch it. Some of you might see that and wonder why. Why are you correcting me? I don't want to be a negative impact because you're so delicate right now. You're so easily influenced. I want everything to be communicated in the lectures and in the live sessions. Focus there. Unless I mention it there, everything else is not important. No other video series is important. No other thing is important. But if you need to have a foundation before we go into February 7th in the live sessions, you should go through those 40 videos that I put out last year in the 2022 mentorship. It's not a lot of material. You can probably digest it over the time between now and February 7th, not even rushing it. And it'll give you at least a foundation so that when you see me pointing to certain things in the chart, you'll understand what I'm talking about. You don't need to do any other video series. I thought about this over the last couple of weeks. I'm like, okay, I gave them, or you all, a short list of video series. You really don't need anything except for last year's mentorship videos. There's only 40 of them, 41 of them. Know that and come up every day when I do the live sessions and follow along on Twitter every day because I'm prompting you live where my focus is, where I believe the market's going to go next. And that is going to do more from you, for you and your learning than anything else because I'm forcing you to look at specific things in the market, framing only a small segment of price action, and then you can't deny it. it's fun, isn't it? Seeing it happen, real time in the charts, feels like fortune telling. It's like time travel. It's so fucking fun. And you haven't even made any money yet. Now imagine, fucking imagine, okay? You're in the Maldives. It's five years from fucking now. You're kicking back and you're thinking, you know what? That fucking ICT, yeah, that's a hell of a fucking guy. He came out there and literally fucking smoked everything out there for free. And look at the lifestyle I'm living right now. I gotta send that motherfucker a tweet. Dude, I'm over here right now, soaking up the sun on this fucking grass hut motherfucking thing floating around in this beautiful turquoise water. And I just want to tell you, thank you so much for the new lifestyle that you had a small part in building for me. Thank you. You know what? I'm going to fucking walk around my fucking house like a fucking peacock, dance around, chill on my moves like fucking Jagger, and my wife's going to slap me upside the head and say, shut the fuck up, okay? But I don't care. That's what I'm looking forward to. I know, I know where all of you potentially could end up. You just don't see it yet. You don't see that yet. But I know it. I fucking know it. And you just have to show up. Show up every day. Take notes. Listen to all this boring, boring, boring bullshit. Because it matters. It doesn't matter to you right now because you want signals. You want to get your funded account secured. You want to make money. You want to copy trades and all that bullshit. Okay? That's all the wrong things. That's all the wrong things. You want junk food, fast food, and sugar fucking candy bars right now. That's what you want. You need the fucking meat and potatoes. That's what you need. You need that. You need a clean diet. Remove all the junk food from your fucking attention. That's what you need to be doing. Period. If you want to watch other people other than me, well, I gave you a guy. He's out there pushing. He doesn't, I mean, just recently mentioned the fair value gap, but I don't see him going, oh, this is a fair value gap. And there's nothing wrong with that because he's consistently finding setups that he trusts on his own and he's making money. Let that be an encouragement to you. There's people making money, even outside of my shit. Some of them doing phenomenal, crazy level amount of money. And they ain't touched one ICT fucking thing ever. But I, I mean, this is me. This is my shit. I'm not going to talk about other stuff. I, mean, I, I, I can't tear down somebody that has done well and is making money. And it's not my inspiration to do that. I do attack retail logic because my methodology is opposed to it. Like, I turn it upside down. That's how I trade. And that sometimes comes across as arrogant, argumentative, prideful, boastful, you know, you name it. And I guess in a lot of ways I'm partially, you know, it's true. But it doesn't change the facts that these are the facts. This is how I trade. So you, you have to know your, yourself, the market, the 
the market you're trading, your model, how you're gonna only engage in that model. I'm not gonna do anything outside the time parameters. I'm not gonna trade another market. I'm not gonna try to add another pattern. I'm not gonna try to pyramid before I'm ready to understand how to do that. And you need to know the landscape, the economic landscape, the, the economic calendar. You know, is it is it conducive for a very easy week? Or are we plagued with a lot of high or medium impact news drivers you know, in the economic calendar? FOMC, okay, CPI number, non-farm payroll. Those have a impediment on easy trading days. And you won't know what that feels like or understand what I just said until you see that happening. And you watch price action live over my shoulder and I'm, I'm coaching you what, what you should expect and what shouldn't be occurring today and what will likely occur. And then because you watched it and you didn't put a money result at the end of the lesson, you didn't lose or make any money. You observed price because that's the that's the root pathway to success and making money. You have to determine. You have to pick. You have to guess. You have to forecast. Where is this market going? Is it going to go higher from where it is right now, or is it going to go lower? If it is going to go against you, how far is it reasonable for you to allow for that and still trust that it's going to go where you think it's going to go? That's setting goals. The goal is not to have your stop loss hit, and the other goal is to have your targets and partials hit. That's setting goals. That's fucking trading, folks. People that say don't have goals, fuck them. They have no idea what they're talking about. You have to have a structured approach. That way you can go in and see this is what the market's likely to do. Not some retail horseshit. Not some kind of fucking dumb animal pattern that has absolutely no fucking bearing on what price is going to do next. It has no respect of that shit. You're fooling yourself with chaos. That's chaos theory. Oh, look, look, it's randomness. Go back and find, you know, oh, this is where it would have worked. No. No. So you have to have an understanding of the economic calendar. You will see that, obviously, this year. I usually prompt you on Twitter anyway. And you have to, obviously, know your risk tolerance. You know, it gets back to knowing yourself. So it begins and ends with the same thing, you. You have to know yourself, what you're comfortable with. Are you comfortable with a trading model that you're trying to buy? Can you afford to live in the trading house that you're trying to buy? In other words, are you going to be able to be comfortable only trading that model and not be influenced to do something else and dilute your attention and focus on the model that you're trying to build? If you're out there all the time, like it, how foolish would it be for me buying a new home, moving into the new home, and I'm still unpacking? How foolish would it be for me to be looking at Zillow listings for new homes right now? That's the last thing on my fucking list. I'm not even thinking that, right? But how many times have you looked at something from an influencer, maybe me or someone else, and you see what they're doing, and they show you results? They show you the MyFX book or they show you the MT4 scroll of you know what their profits are. And you're thinking, oh, that's probably something else. You know, that's, that's a better house right now. I'd like to spend a night in that house. That's the equivalent of what you're doing. That's exactly what you're doing. But that shit is stupid. Like you don't even settle in on one methodology first to that way get some kind of baseline experience. And unfortunately, in this industry, there's a lot of bullshit. There's a lot of things that's going to look sugar-coated, candy-coated. You know, come over here. We have all the sweets that, that you want. But when you taste it, it's horseshit. And it's not even sugar-coated. You get your hands dirty. It smells like shit, tastes like shit, and you end up losing money. And you wasted time because you were influenced by image. Image. When all that shit doesn't matter, my cars, my home, the things I have, the, my checking account balance, all that shit cannot make you better as a trader. If it could, I would fucking shove it down your throat. Literally, I would cram it down your fucking face every day if I felt that it would make you a better trader. None of that shit does. And the only thing that does is it invites worship. And I don't want you fucking worshiping me. I want you working your ass off, building your own model, finding the results you were looking for, and then just tell me, hey, this is what I've done. What do you think? Man, that's all I'm asking for. That's all I'm asking for. How hard is this fucking relationship got to be? Like, seriously. 
Some of you are fighting me, and I'm trying to be the best friend you ever fucking had. So, core tenets to high probability trading are, is obviously in short list is you got to know yourself. Know the market you're trading. Don't dilute your attention. Trade only the model you're working with, nothing extra. No, don't tinker with it. Know the economic calendar and the landscape, the risks that are associated with that. And then you have to know your risk tolerance. What are you willing to absorb? Because you might get a funded account, and they might say that you have $6,000 daily drawdown. But when you hit 500 and you lose your fucking mind, what's your threshold really? $500. So you got to make some changes, don't you? Just because that funded account or your equity balance says that you can afford to trade more, you might not be equipped psychologically and emotionally to trade like that yet. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. If you only make a 1% a month and you're using what we considered the funded account of $150,000, let me tell you something. That does significant damage to a rent payment. It does significant damage to a car note each month. It does significant damage to grocery costs today. You start there, folks. You don't aim for the pie in the sky type shit. Lamborghini lifestyle. Lamborghinis are overrated. They're pieces of shit. The bottom line is, is you want to have income, cash flow. And you want to be able to trust that what you do, even though it will lose sometimes and you're going to make mistakes as a human being, it's all part of this industry. And that lifestyle, you have to grow accustomed to that. And by inviting people outside of yourself as friends, family, social media buddies, inviting them into that discussion, the only thing that comes from that is compounding the pressure, the anxiety, and stress. So why the fuck would you even consider doing that? Why would you do it? Right now, you think that it will establish you and make you better. When I'm telling you, it has the adverse effect on you. It makes it harder than it needs to be because you're compounding the mental baggage that you now have to carry. You have to carry the hopes and fucking treasured beliefs that your friends and family on social media, they're not your family, but you treat them better than your family. You have, the, you have their hopes about you ahead of everything else. Don't think so? How many times have you rushed to fucking Twitter over your, your son trying to get your attention? He's tugging on your shirt. Dad, Dad, wait a minute. I got to get this post on Twitter. I got to show my fucking P&L for today. Oh, I, I got to close this fucking trade right now so I can go on social media and share it. Don't bother me now, son. Don't bother me now, son. I'm on a roll. I got something better to do than to be a dad. I'm sorry if I got to be market dad sometimes, but this is the shit that I had to learn from that I did that stuff. I didn't do the best job as being a dad, and I wasn't the best husband because I put the markets and trading in front of all of them. And you don't want to live with what I live with now. It's regret. Because I would give 20 times what I have to get the opportunity to go back and fix that, and I can't. So all these things are going to weigh. When you fucking send me tweets or you put comments that I will not approve of on my fucking videos and saying, you talk too much shit, get to the fucking point, get to the point. The point is, if you do this long enough, you're going to have these fucking problems. And you're going to have these regrets. And my point is, I don't want you to live with what I live with. I walked this shit. I lived it. And there's a lot of things I wish I could go back and undo, and I can't. I can't. And I'm an asshole if I fucking don't tell you how to avoid what I did. It doesn't matter how good a fucking trader you are. You're going to fuck up somewhere, and I'm showing you where you won't expect it. Success still brings with it the opportunity to be a fucking failure. I failed being the best daddy I could have been to my own fucking children. They saw me once in a while. I'm the ghost in the machine. I was the ghost in the fucking house too. Once in a while they saw me. That was it. I was chained to these fucking cha- to these monitors. I was chained 
like a fucking slave to these charts. Because in my mind, this is who I am. And this is all I am. And that's not true. I'm a loving husband. I'm a loving dad. I'm a good friend. But in my mind, I allowed this whole industry to hypnotize me into thinking that my only sense of significance is me building up my net worth, building up my next trade, what's my result going to be, and there it is. That's how I defined my whole existence over the last 30 years. Well, the last 20 years, because the last two years, I've wrestled with these demons and I've made it public. It's uncomfortable to talk about these things, but it's real, and nobody does enough of it. You like the Mark Douglas book? That's great. That was a nice read. But it doesn't even scratch the surface of what you're going to fucking endure in this. It's not about only the money you make and what you lose. It's what you give up. And you can't waste the time with toxic fucking bullshit. You can't do it. If you do those things, it's just going to hold you back. Or the be it'll be the very barrier that's going to block you. So when you're looking at trading the markets, you think it's just the charts and the patterns. And like all these guys that show they have uh, money and shit, okay, uh, or they're making money and they're profiting, like they don't have anything else to worry about. That's them lying. <laughs> That's them hiding that stuff, okay? I love, I literally love watching live streamers trade because number one, that is brass. That takes guts to do that. Number one, you're, you're placing yourself out there in the eyes of everybody that wants to give you their opinion. And you may or may not appreciate their opinion, but you still are offering and inviting them. And then when, well, I'll give you an example. Uh, yesterday, I invited all of you to go where I was watching, and I've been watching that guy, uh, Patrick Lang, for uh, probably like four, almost four weeks. And he's pretty consistent. And he has a little bit of a character to himself, and that's fine. I can appreciate that. It makes it more entertaining instead of just watching the candlesticks go down. But when, obviously, the, my entourage showed up, and some of you acted like fools and embarrassed me, and I know some of you probably aren't really my students. You're in there trying to be a dick. But uh, I watched him and his disposition change, and I know that fucked his focus all up. And that's why I apologize publicly because that was not my intent. And I, I'm not going to be there you know, try to do that anymore. But I did put your name out there, Pat. I, I think what you're doing is cool. It's awesome. I wish you would show more of you know, Hawaii and some B-roll shit. That would be neat. It's beautiful there. My wife's been there. I, I have not been there. But uh, the, the focus and the shift that took place was visual. And he guarded himself by putting it to the members only chat. And he put up his walls. And I'm sure if we were honest and we were talking together right now, you know, and I've never talked to him before, I think he would be honest and say, Yeah, it, it kind of fucked me up. It pissed me off because, you know, these people come in here talking some shit, and here I am doing it live. You're right. You're fucking doing it live, and these talkers are just talking shit. And that's what this industry is all about. These talkers that ain't doing shit, they're miserable. So that's what you're inviting. So you have to be prepared for that. You have to be prepared. If you're going to make your journey public, there's going to be a whole lot more negative fucking people watching you and hoping that you're going to fail. And are you really wanting to invite that in the beginning when you're so easily influenced? Most of you wouldn't be able to endure that. I'm pretty fucking good at trading. I, I'm, I'm pretty good at it. I am honest, and I've told you. I discovered in 2016, I cannot. I can't process constant, you know, chit-chat questions. Like, uh, what the fuck? I, I can't even focus. Like, this is hard shit, man. This is hard. You are wrestling with your internal demons 
and you're trying to decipher what these candlesticks are going to do next, and you're worried about what the fuck's going to happen in the world, any given moment, some shit can hit the marketplace, some news event, some kind of fucking unexpected thing, all of a sudden, shit goes upside down. We are in, I don't care what anybody, anybody tells you this is not true. They're full of shit and they've been around long enough. These markets right now are so much more complex than they have ever been. Can I trade it? Yeah. But I can tell you in all honesty, even though you see me being as precise as I am, I am not as comfortable as I was before the last three years, let's say, that I like. I think that's a fair way of saying what, I'm, what I mean without saying it. You can probably hear my stomach growling. <laughs> I apologize for that. But you're learning, let me tell you something. You're learning how to do this in the most difficult time ever. The markets are very fickle sometimes in recent months and years. There's not a lot of follow through. It's just real choppy. And there's opportunities to make money in that. But unfortunately, everybody wants these big textbook runners. They expect these big explosive Bitcoin type surges where it just keeps on going and over delivers. And unfortunately, if you have that mindset and you're trading in these environments as of recent, it can be very frustrating and, and not de deliver that. So, oh, I got my whistle. It's only the second time in my whole time I've been talking. The, uh, I know I can talk, can I? I can keep going and going and going like Energizer Bunny. This guy never shuts the fuck up. Not when I'm awake, I, I don't. So we, we covered a lot of things, core tenants to high probability, and basically it revolves around you. Everything is you. It's your responsibility. Your results are your own. Your success is your own. Your failure is your own. You own all of it, and that's what this industry forces upon all of us as traders. And unfortunately, some of you, much like I was in the beginning, I was ill-equipped for that, that reality check. And I want you to trust what you're going to be seeing and learning this year without money attached to it. Because that's the only way you're going to be able to combat that. If you don't believe me, waste your time this year and regret it. Okay, that's all I'm going to say. So, technically speaking, uh, what we will be doing is I'm going to do a top-down analysis. So, I will go through the weekly chart. I'll give you what I think the weekly chart is going to do. So that kind of sets the stage for where I think that expansion on the week is likely to be. Like, is it more likely to have a big, larger portion of the weekly range go to the north in the higher prices or lower? And I want to kind of frame my trades predominantly in that direction. It doesn't mean I won't trade counter to that. It just means if I do take those trades, I won't pyramid those positions up if it's going against my weekly expectation. Let me say it again so that we understand. Hypothetically, let's just say I do my top-down analysis with you, and I show that my opinion is that there's a strong possibility that the S&P will have a sizable move. What is sizable? It's all relative to the time I'm showing you on the chart, and I'll give you very specific levels it's going to reach to, so it's not ambiguous. I would prefer a move on the weekly chart reaching to a specific level you know, under the marketplace, you know, price right now. That means I will, I want to do my largest position or even pyramid in that direction only. I will take longs and go long in that week, but I will never build a pyramid in that where it goes against my weekly counter ticker. So that way we understand what I'm doing here. Um, I have done pyramiding against the weekly counter ticker for my weekly expectations, but it's very few and infrequent because I want to be trading with the order flow that I'm expecting and, and price delivery to be on my side. So that way I won't be building in a position that more likely to turn on me or not deliver. So you know, why, why throw you know, more gas on a fire that's uh, you know, already out? You won't get any more ignition. It's, it's done. So I'm trying to only push the real heavy-handed leverage trades in the direction where I have the highest probability of movement in my favor. So you will see a top-down analysis, uh, and it won't be arduous. It's, it would be very short and sweet, what I'm looking for. And you're going to ask immediately when I do it, well, why not this and why not that? My greatest request to you is this. Focus on the things I'm talking about only. 
If I'm not talking about it, it has no bearing on why I'm doing what I'm doing. This year, I'm going to show you how to take the things from my concepts and make a very lean, streamlined approach. It's not bloated with all the things that you think it's necessary. No, it's not. I don't know if you like a breaker as an entry technique. I don't know if you like the fair value gap. I don't know if you like you know, selling short buy stops on a false breakout. I don't know if you even trust a, in, a institutional order flow entry drill. Because unless you know what a fair value gap is, you can't do an institutional order flow entry drill. Like you wouldn't even know what that is. So everything has its own place. But also I'm, I'm cognizant to the fact that you're all bringing your own personality to this. So I have to make concessions for that as an educator and allow you to find your own niche in this. Because if you don't bring your own personality to this and you try to copy me entirely all by itself, and whether I'm right or wrong, and if I'm giving profitable analysis, if you copy that, the only thing you've learned is to be codependent. And that's the worst thing as an educator. I, I don't want that. I'm not trying to cultivate that. I want you to be independent. I want you to learn how to do this on your own. And the only way you're going to do that effectively is by not doing anything with money attached to it. And I know it sounds kind of intuitive. It sounds kind of productive. And you were thinking, there ain't no way I'm doing that. If you're calling the market live, I'm in there. I'm fucking trading this shit. And I don't give a fuck. You can judge me afterwards. I said, I need to get my ends met. I get it. I understand. Here's my request. Please don't tell me what you made or lost. I think that's fair. Okay? Please don't tweet to me and say, high five, ICT, thank you so much. I, I don't want to see that. Because if you do that, you are going to be in my mind when I'm doing the analysis. And I don't want to second guess anything. Because I don't want to have any of those types of distractions, ever. When I call those shots on Twitter, I'm posting the tweets, and I'm not looking at anything until afterwards. Because I can't have any of you influence me. I don't want to be worrying. I don't want to be managing your fucking trades. Okay, that's what that's what it's going to become. I'm telling you what I think the market's going to do, and you won't see me push the button. So I'm not managing a trade. I'm reading price. I'm practicing what I'm preaching. That's how you learn it. But as soon as you all collectively are following them and taking trades, and you're putting the results, and you're showing you're making money, that's going to weigh on me, and I don't want that. Like, I don't want to be managing your fucking trades. That's why you see all these funded accounts, okay, these, these companies. I'm not stupid, okay? I'm not, I'm not fucking dumb. I know exactly what the fuck's going on. That's why I asked the other day, what funded accounts allow copiers, trade copiers? This is exactly why I shit on my FX book in 2017. Once I find out that someone's potentially going to trade and copy my fucking trades, I'm not interested. Listen, folks, I'm consistent with this. Even on TradingView, I shit those accounts constantly. Do it all the fucking time because I don't want – I know somebody can fucking see what I'm doing there, and I actually literally type it out in my fucking charts. Stop following my fucking trades, TradingView, and I fucking purposely shit the fucking trades. I do it all the time. But you can argue about that, whether that's the real reason why I'm doing it or not. That all goes to the wayside when I'm out there live and I'm calling the market. That's what I want you focusing on. That's all I want you to focus on. If you do that, okay, if you do that, you will learn what you came here for. Top down will do. And we're going to note the higher time frame key levels on the daily chart. Now, what does that look like? What do I mean by that? Well, I did it this week. I outlined what I thought was going to be the direction using the uh, – I didn't show you the weekly chart, but I guess I could you know, later today show you the chart on the weekly and show you what I was looking at and why it was – impactful but i did focus on the daily chart and i told you how to do how to do how to split the wicks and taught you that the candlestick wicks are gaps the algorithm sees wicks as gaps so it's going to go to one of three levels the high of a gap the low of a gap or the middle which is consequent encroachment and you saw how beautifully beautifully she followed her coding she went exactly to those levels like i was saying today well, not today, but the, you know, the days I was showing you where those levels were and why they're important. You don't see that in any books in retail logic anywhere. None of that shit is taught anywhere else. Okay, uh, That was codified in 1996, and there ain't no way you can dispute it. It is what it is. So we go through the daily chart. We go through the weekly chart. 
and there isn't a whole lot that's necessary, but that that's the basis for framing narrative. Okay, so that way you know how to use the PD arrays. The PD arrays are the things that are going to be noteworthy, like an order block, a fair value back on the daily chart, a weekly chart, an old high, an old low, uh, something that is going to cause the market to want to gravitate towards that level. That's how you have to, uh, to build your beginning basis of a narrative. Why should the market reach to that level? Well, because it's already went down here and took out sell side or went above here to take out buy side. So we know whenever there's a stop hunt, we want to be we want to look for the opposing arrays. So I'll give you an example. The market trades down below a key low, whether it be weekly or daily, and it trades above it again. We reasonably expect that that was a stop hunt, not all the time, but that we go into our decision making process. If this, then that. So if the market takes out a low, and we're doing fresh analysis at the beginning of the week, you know, like right now we're in neutral time, so. The markets are not trading, and I'm not talking about crypto because I mean, <laughs> we're left on the market. But if we, and I just killed a lot of you and pissed me off, and, and I'm probably pissing you off by saying that, but I, I don't want you asking me about crypto. That's why I do it. I don't, I don't trade it, so please don't ask me. But our markets, futures and uh, Forex, is not trading right now. So this is when you want to do your analysis, your higher time frame analysis, where you're not being influenced by the, the up and down ebb and flow of price action. And it's static right now. Everybody... In every major institution right now, they're they're looking through the charts too. They have their analysts looking at shit over the weekend, so that way they can get their positions squared for what? The open on Monday. How are we going to be in that pursuit of investment profits for the coming week? Everybody's losing sleep right now, tonight, going into Sunday, worrying about what the fuck is this market going to do come Sunday's open? How are we going to trade on Mondays at 9.30 open? What's going to happen? Everybody's pouring themselves over charts, drawing fucking phantom trend lines and shit, and all kinds of stuff, all kinds of things. Flipping rune stones on the, on the ground, reading tarot cards, getting their palms red. They're all trying to figure out what it's going to do. What we do is simply strip it down to, is it likely that we're going to see the weekly candlestick that's going to form in this new week coming up? Is it going to have more potential to expand higher or lower. That sets the baseline for narrative. You need that before you get to bias. To arrive at a bias, you must understand how the narrative is likely to pan out. What's it likely to do? Well, the weekly chart's likely to go up to the specific level. And how much of a movement is that? Does it allow for multiple trades? And then you look at the daily chart, and you look for those levels as well. Is there something inside that potential price run after it's taken out sell-side liquidity? Then you look for where's the imbalance that exists if it does, because it may not be one. Is there a fair value gap that it may reach up to? And is it above equilibrium of the last price leg down? And if there isn't, then you look for it to go to buy side. I sound like I'm, I'm trying to complicate things, but you're just watching one video of many. So you're expecting one video, one post from me on, on Twitter to encapsulate the entire process and the algorithm itself. And it's impossible and it's unrealistic expectations. There's nobody that can short line this content. You can't. There's a lot of people out there on YouTube that are trying to do it. Learns ICT in five minutes. You fuck that. That's bullshit. It's bullshit. You have to go through eating this elephant one bite at a time, and I've already warned you going in, it's a long meal. If you want precision, it costs. If you want Tom, Dick, and Harry's fucking, you know, wannabe algorithm and watch bullshit posts on your fucking chart, go right ahead. Do that. Learn good money management, you'll probably do well because that's the real answer there. And then you're going to be using these higher time frame weekly and daily PD arrays order blocks, fair value gaps, and old highs and old lows. Is that complicated? I mean, I've done a lot of talking today, but have I made anything overly complicated by saying we look at a weekly chart, the weekly chart is likely to go higher, so I'm going to be focusing primarily to do my best, biggest positions in buying only, not saying I won't sell short and go short and not doing where it presents itself, 
but I'm only looking to limit my big heavy handed bets on the direction that the weekly chart is likely to move in. Not close. I'm not trying to predict the closing price on that weekly candle. I'm not trying to do that. I'm looking for, is it more likely for that next weekly candle to have a lot of movement, you know, the, the largest portion of the weekly range be going up or going down? And you're probably thinking, okay, well, tell me how to do that. I'm going to. That's what mentoring is. I'm going to fucking literally do it. I'm going to explain why I'm doing it. But some of you don't listen. Like you're, you're asking me, when am I going to do this? Am I, I've been very consistent by telling you. On the 7th of February, live streams are going to happen. But I've been teaching every day. Each small little thing I'm giving you is one more building block. But you're all expecting that building block to be the fucking skyscraper immediately delivered to you. And you understand how to live in it now. Trump Tower. I'm not a Trump fan, by the way. Divisive. Always divisive. Uh, that guy, uh, Tom Hogarth, said I was like a Moses. <laughs> I divided the water. I was laughing about that. Anyway. <laughs> you want a crowd? You want a, you want a faithful crowd? Be divisive. Because when they love you, you know you, you got a good baseline of, of people to talk to then. The people that hate you, fuck them. But the ones that love you, then you have a baseline to work with. And you cater to them. And then by their results, you'll grow. That's how I've done this. There's no advertising. There's none of that bullshit. It's all, it's all organic. And I, had a, I, I planned all this stuff out. I, I am very divisive for a reason. Because I know it causes smoke. And where there's smoke, there's fire. And come here, you get your ass burnt. Once you have these higher time frame weekly and settlement on... Uh, the daily PD rates you're looking for, then you can build a narrative utilizing the economic calendar. So certain days are more likely to produce big ranges. And what days would you expect small ranges to form? Just ahead of a high impact news driver like CPI, FOMC, rate announcements, or non-farm payroll. Now, non-farm payroll is a little bit of a wonky one because this is why I teach my students. If you're gonna trade that, that week, you can trade on Monday, you can trade on Tuesday, but come Wednesday in the New York session, after that, you don't want to trade because it gets really shitty and the, the delivery of price tends to be on a Wednesday afternoon. Not always. I know some of you are going to go on the charts and say, look at this. ICC said never trade on Wednesday. Get the fuck out of here. I'm saying over my 30 years of experience doing this, I have learned to not want to trade in Wednesday afternoon, even though you watch me do it. <laughs> Thursday's trading, and then on Friday, or well, non-farm payroll, don't trade that. Now, that does not mean that price is sitting still and it's not moving around. There are trades there. But as a new student who I'm always talking to, it's important for you to know that those market environments are not the same as a week after non-farm payroll. There's a lot of heavy manipulation that goes on that week. There's a lot of wait-and-see type conditions and the market just tends to be really unfavorable. I can push the button in those days. I can do it. I've done it. I've proven it. But as a new developing student that doesn't have experience, you can hurt yourself. So I try to do my best to make you aware of where these snares, these pitfalls, these traps, these things that are going to hurt you, these thorn bushes. Okay? You don't need to be enticed by the pretty flower that everybody puts up on social media and say, look at this rose I collected today on non-farm payroll. And then when you fucking try to do it next Friday, you get a thorn in your hand. I'm trying to prevent that. okay? Because uh, I hurt myself doing those things. Because I believe these assholes that put out these systems, if, the, if your pops up red, you're a seller on non-farm payroll. If it pops up uh, green, you're a buyer. And they're trying to predict the, um, the numbers. Man, I lost so much fucking money doing that shit. Like, it, just wait for non-farm payroll. If you if you want to do anything, wait for non-pay non-farm payroll. <laughs> non-farm payroll. Tongue twister there. Wait 20 minutes, 30 minutes after the non-farm payroll, and then look for imbalances or liquidity, and then boom, there it is. You can trade it. But I want to be consistent because I know the new students that come to me are not listening intensively. They're cherry picking what they want to hear. They're waiting for this is the buy, this is the sell, here's the stop, here's the target. That's what you're listening for. So I'm like a bulldozer. Don't trade them. It makes it easy to manage you 
And then ultimately, it's your responsibility if you hurt yourself those days because I said don't do it, right? So that's why I teach the way I do it. I'm, I'm trying to be, and this might sound arrogant and a little off base, but some of you need a dad, okay, to tell you sometimes shit ain't right. And sometimes you got to just listen to me and trust that. Trust me. I've done this before. I've been here. I know that I have students that are older than me, okay? But the ones that appreciate good wisdom and good, good real knowledge, they, they reach out and say, look, you know, I appreciate that. I'm, I'm older than you. I'm 80 years old, and I can hear you. Like, I can hear the father in you telling your students this, and I can appreciate it. It resonates with me, and I'm older than you. And I appreciate that. Like, I, I like that kind of stuff. Um, I, I like that more than the you're the greatest of all time goat shit. I can't fucking stand that. But anyway, we're almost there, folks, on a, a quarter of the way left. Okay, <laughs> Congratulations. You've endured another one. So what's a simple model? Okay, what is a simple model so that way you can build this blueprint or at least start thinking about it this weekend? Like where are you going in this pursuit this year? You can't wait to see what I'm going to do. Oh, I can't wait to see what you're going to do. Okay, but as a simple model, uh, we're using the ES, the E-mini S&P. That's our market. And we're focusing our attention on 930 to noon. Now, I'm not going to be here all the way till noon. I'll probably usually close the session around 11 o'clock. I will tell you what I think may happen, but most of the time you're going to see if there was a setup, it's usually probably panned out by 11 o'clock. And if it's anything less, it's going to be a partial that you could pretend to manage in your own attention and following Christ. Okay, but from 9.30 opening, that's the model, from 9.30 to noon. So that would be your working hours. I will be in live session at 8.30. I want to see the news drivers if there is one, and I will be putting us in live sessions when there won't be a news driver. So that way you can see the difference in how we trade those and what we would encounter, how to how to think about it, you know, what the what the process would be. But my time will be usually like quarter after eight, New York local time. That way, there's 15 minutes to do my bullshit monologues, and then at 8:30 we'll watch the delivery of Christ after after that, and then. I will have my charts open, but I'll probably walk away until like 10 after 9. And then I'll start watching Christ again and prepare for the 9.30 opening. I'll give you what my expectations are, what I would like to see, what I don't want to see. And then we wait for it to materialize. And then I would say, this is what we would expect to see Christ in next. And I'll start painting a narrative based on every one minute and five minute candle. And you'll watch it over my own charts. You'll see it on my charts. You'll see it's not fucking delayed, okay? It's real. And if you have been listening to me all this time, I've told you the only way you're going to be able to see this live, and you can't even trade like with delayed data. You can't do it with trading view. And I'm in trading view. So you'll see it. You'll ex I'll explain why I'm expecting it to happen. You will see consistency. You will see understanding in price action. You will get comfortable with not knowing when there is nothing to do. There's times when that is there, and you'll see that there's no reason to be af afraid of that or feel like you don't know something. If you don't know something, that's when you sit still. There are times, as a trader, I don't know enough. Is it? Does it mean that I'm, I'm, I'm ignorant to how markets operate? No. It means I understand how they fucking operate, and it means I know that this is a trap. Retail will chase everything during those times. I'm not going to, and I'm teaching you how to do that too. Know when to do it, when not to do it. The best valuable lesson you can learn is when not to do something. Walking up to the pot that's sitting on the stove. You just got home. You don't know if that pot's hot until when. You walk over and you put your hand on it too fast and burn your ass. Or you put your hand near it. You respect the risk of, I might burn my hand here. That's experience. You burned your hand before. You didn't learn the lesson of just not touching the pot yet, just getting close to it. Does it feel warm? No. You didn't. As a kid, you don't know what. You don't know the experience of getting burned. And that's exactly the mindset that most of you that are coming to me are. So I'm teaching you with that perspective in mind. It may seem disrespectful to some of you, the way I teach. It may seem like you're talking to me like a kid. I, you know, I'm going to go, look, I get it. But I'm also aware that some of you motherfuckers don't want to listen and you get yourself in situations that I got to read emails about. I wish I would have listened to you. I wish I would have done this. I wish I would have done that. And that's all avoidable. It's all 
100% avoidable because you're learning in a condition where there's no risk. That's the only way you can cut through the bullshit and read price. The outcome is, are you seeing price do the things I'm teaching you? If that's what you learn to do and you can forecast that and track real-time order flow without depth of market, without all the bullshit, we're just looking at the candlesticks. That's all we're doing, time and price. That's all we're doing. You will not see a fucking indicator pop up on my fucking chart ever. The open, high, low, and close on a one and five minute chart once we start going. In the beginning, I will revisit the weekly and the daily. I'll show you the key levels that are impactful. But we're going to rate right down into the one to five minute charts that will have those annotated levels from those higher time frames. So that way you can see how price gyrates and gravitates towards them based on specific times of the day. And you will grow confident in your ability to be able to do this because you have been trained to see it. You will see exactly what's going on. And over time, you will adopt the same mindset that I have where you can reasonably trust, not unequivocally, not absolutely trust, it's never going to fail, but you will learn to trust the things I'm teaching you have a high measure of merit. And they repeat a lot more than they fail if certain conditions are met. And I know that your head's swirling right now. What are those conditions? Why can't you just spell it out? You will learn it better and more effectively by me doing it in front of you. Certain lessons can't be taught in a book. You can't, you just can't do it unless you see it done. And a lot of you, you're going to discover that you are better visual learners. And that's why it's been a struggle for you because you have to go in and find these things on your own. And if you don't know what you're doing or what you're looking for, it feels like it's a never-ending cycle of learning but never getting to where you should be arriving. And that's, I understand, it's understandable. But if you sit in front of charts and watch the real-time data, if you do that for several months, you will know right away what I was talking about in those lectures, and it will resonate with you. And because I know some of you haven't done that, this is the opportunity for you to be enticed by me. <laughs> And it's it's for your it's it's better for you to see it. Even though I know that some of you are going to copy me and, and do it as trades, I don't want to know about it. Okay, that's all I'm asking. Don't. It's like the dad. I know you're going on a date. I don't want you to do certain things, but I can't stop you and I can't control what you do when you're outside of my sight. But I just don't want you bringing home babies. Okay, don't come home telling me you got somebody knocked up. I don't want to hear about it. Okay, whether you made money or lost money, that's your fucking business. That's the bed you make it, you lie in it. Okay, that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm going to put out there, and that is the last time I'm going to talk about it. But we will go through the expectation of and I'm looking for a setup between 9.30 and noon. Most of the time you're going to see that the setup usually pans out by 11 o'clock, and then we're focusing tra trading inside the intraday price action. So day trading, and the specific time is nine, uh, 9.30 to noon that that window of opportunity and your time is always going to be new york time focusing on pd array matrix inside that fractal so the other day when i put up a video and i shaded out the 9 30 to noon i said this is your window this is what you're focusing on everything prior to that you don't give a shit about you don't care about it it's irrelevant unless i talk about it Unless it's encapsulated in that little fractal of time. What time? 9.30, shade that, all the way over to noon. Everything you're looking for and hunting for is going to occur in that time window. Now, that's the aspect of what you're focusing on for where the setup's going to form because that's time. What are you looking for next? Price. So where has it been in that range? That's what you're looking for. You want to see what is it referring to next? And is it going to reach outside the boundaries of the present range that's formed? Or is it going to stay within that? And that won't make any sense to you until you are with me looking over my shoulder and I'll explain it to you. That's what I mean by certain, certain topics. Unless you watch me articulate it live over the chart, it won't make any sense. It will feel like it's disjointed. And it wasn't a premeditated action on my part to make it feel that way. It's just, it's the way it is. Like 
You can't. You can't do it unless you do it. You can't learn it unless you get your hands in it and, and, and see it and, and just handle it each day, seeing it over and over and over again. That's what I'm doing with you with Twitter. I'm prompting your attention to look at a specific element of time. Watch this level. Watch where it's going to go to next. This is what we're looking for. And then you see it. Look at the excitement everybody's posting and, and the response. Man, this is great. This is so fun. Exactly. That's how learning should be. That's how it should be. Because when it's fun, it's engaging. It makes you feel like, wow, this is not a waste of my time. I really see the, the effects of what I'm doing here. Like there's a, there's a real result panning out, which is what we were expecting. It was measured, and it delivers. Amazing. Now, contrast that with everything I've tried to do in all these books and shit, and I've never been able to see this type of precision and continuity. I've never, I've never been able to find anything else deliver what I'm trying to share with you. So hopefully, you know, hopefully that's a, a selling point on you not spending any money with me, right? <laughs> and we're going to be utilizing the medium and high impact news drivers. That means the economic calendar. I'll talk you through that, obviously, you know, every day on the Twitter feed. I'll tell you, you know, be mindful of certain things at certain times. And we're risking no more than 1%. Hypothetically, if we're looking at the moves, okay, you need to go back and reflect on it after the fact. You're not watching it and thinking, this is how much money I'd be making and losing. After the fact, when you do all your markups and you annotate your chart and you record your, your observations for that day and that case study that we've done, you want to go through and say, okay, hypothetically, using what I just watched today, I would have used potentially this entry point, this price, and where my stop would be. How much drawdown would I have incurred? How much time did it take before the drawdown or first partial was met? And then how long does it take before the trade actually goes to fruition and reaches terminus? That means our target or where we would have been stopped out hypothetically. Because I will walk you through when price is there. I'd say, okay, it should not go to this level. Whenever I say price should not revisit this level, in your mind for annotation purposes later on, that's where you have a hypothetical stop loss. Okay, Some of you are going to interpret that as that's where I need to raise my stop to or lower my stop to. I don't want to hear about it. Okay, But – that's what your mindset is after the fact. So that way you're doing what I teach my students to do. If you can't watch it live, the same lesson is profitable for you to go through it in hindsight the same way. And you'll have the benefit of watching real-time data because my chart will be live recorded, showing a one- and five-minute chart. So there's no disadvantage here because even if you sat down and watched me talk about it live, it's the same experience. Especially if you don't look at the chart, like if you can't be here live, don't look at anything. Come home, do your normal everyday thing, okay? Don't look at the charts. Just go to my live stream and watch it from that perspective only. And you will have the same experience that, that individuals that are going to be watching me live do it. They'll have that same – you'll have that same experience. It will be unknown to you what actually transpires. You won't have in, inside edge to know what actually panned out afterwards. So it won't distract you, and you'll see what it feels like to be watching it and me explain what it should and shouldn't do. And it's, it's just a really rewarding thing. It will convince you to do it when I'm not live streaming because I'm not going to live stream every day. So I'm, I've only committed to two a week because you'll see it's, it's a lot. And that's several hours, two times. And look at this shit. I'm still talking to you now. Okay, It takes a lot of time out of your week. A lot of people don't have a whole lot of time, right? But this year, I'm making my time available to you. And if you do the things I'm telling you to do, you will learn what it is you're here for. And I think uh, – yep, I think I – yeah, I don't want that my thing here. When you're looking at your trades, okay, hypothetical trades, when you're logging it, you're talking to yourself in your charts. Like I see this – or I'm sorry. I seen this fair value gap, and I felt confident – that that was a strong area for me to go in, enter on, and I felt confident that my stop loss placed here would mitigate any undue anxiety, and I would trust the fact that getting stopped out here would be a good thing and it would limit my loss. It sounds artificial. It sounds stilted. It sounds disingenuous. It is. It's total fucking bullshit. But you're giving yourself positive self-talk in your charts. So that way when the week pans out and on the weekend you're looking back, 
you're seeing the chart, you're going in there recording the whole process all over again by seeing every individual candle, and you're reading those annotations. It's in your own words. You wrote it, but your subconscious sees that, and you're feeling the dopamine of, wow, this really panned out. Look how this whole weekend, you're going into that journal. You already know it's a love fucking story. That you already know it's a good fucking thing. It's good. But when you go back and you read it in your own words that you saw that coming, you saw that your self-talk is positive. You're absolutely not shitting on anything about the marketplace that you did or didn't see. Nothing negative ever gets into your journal. Nothing. Nothing. There's always a way to unemotionally be detached from recording something that would be not a favorable outcome. And what do I mean by that? The days that you see me outline it, I want you to adopt that same mindset, like you saw the same thing I saw, but from your perspective, and say, okay, I was looking for this fair value gap to support price. It was unsuccessful here, and this is what I learned from it. See the difference between that and saying, this fucking shit never works. I always get the wrong ones. You know, it, you, you're going to... You don't want anything negative in your journal because when you refer back to it on Saturday or Sunday, whenever you, you, you do it, when the market's not trading, you want to go through your Monday through Friday markups and then record how much drawdown every one of these potential setups were there. And then read out loud in your own words every annotation. It's like meditation. And I know it doesn't seem like it's going to be all that impactful, but you're literally – coaching yourself with the most positive influence that you can do and you're tricking your subconscious into thinking that that was experience that you had and foresight that you knew beforehand that's how you train your reticular activating system when you see something over and over again and it's a positive thing it combats fear and anxiety and it reinforces the understanding of what it is that your pattern recognition should be zeroing in on when you're watching price you cannot teach yourself any other way. That, that's it. That's the secret sauce to learning how to do this effectively and properly. And no, it will not happen in one week. It will not be in one month. It won't be in three months. It won't be in four months. It's going to take the whole fucking year. Okay? So pack a fucking lunch. Bring some road snacks. No beer. No intoxication. <laughs> leave, your, leave your weed you know, for the weekend. But when we're doing this shit, you got to be 100% lucid. 100%. Leave the baggage at the door. Leave all your bullshit, preconceived ideas about what you think the market's going to do on your indicators or anybody else. Focus. Focus on what I'm talking about. What I'm not talking about is not important. That's all you need to do. Show up. Roll your sleeves up and just have fun. Have fun and I promise you everything. Everything that was a sticking point for you. I'm going to remove all that this year. You're going to have no hindrances whatsoever except for the time required being here. And it's expensive. It's expensive. This costs more than any amount of money I would have charged because you already have anxiety about it. I'm not going to waste my fucking time with this guy. I'm not going to waste my time with this shit. What happens if I go into this and watch it for two months and this shit doesn't make any sense to me still? How do you know yet? How do you know that that's something you're even worrying about right now. Because I believe I've already presented enough reason to do a further investigation for free. And if anything, I promise you're going to come away with a better understanding about price anyway. And we keep pressing into it, showing up every day, doing the same things I'm teaching you to do. Even when I don't do it, that means when I'm not doing a live session, you need to be doing what it is I did in the live sessions, how I did it. What I'm expecting, why certain things repeat over and over and over again. And you'll see there's continuity there. And you'll also see when I get it wrong, there's no emotion. There's no shame, no embarrassment. It says, okay, here's what – it didn't do this, so now what do we do? Here's the process. We do this, 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 and we don't do this, this, and this. And then we either close the charts or we wait for more information or we wait for the afternoon session. There's a process that I'll walk you through, and it's something that you need to see being done. And you'll see all this anxiety, all these fearful things that you're so concerned about right now. 
are such a distraction for no reason. All the negative things that you're thinking right now. But what if it doesn't do this? And what if it doesn't work? And what if it this? And what if that? What if the market makers go against ICQ on every trade? That would be interesting, wouldn't it? <laughs> Come sign up and just show up for that, right? That's a good enough reason to show up, right? Let's see him blow it. The negative thoughts that you're thinking right now, and I'm going to say this and I'm going to close it. You're placing so much emphasis on the potential of this being a waste and a scary thing to endure. And you don't want to waste any of your time. You don't want to be a victim of ICQ. Oh, I believe this bullshit and it didn't work. That's what you're that's what you're feeling right now. Not all of you, some of you. I'm talking to the ones that are just really on the fence still. But if you're being honest with yourself, you're doing that with most everything in your life. You're more prone to be anxious about everything, not just what I'm gonna have to show you. And I understand what that feels like. I lived with generalized anxiety and high anxiety to the point of agoraphobia where I didn't want to be around people. I'm going to help you overcome at least this part of your anxiety. I'm going to show you that you can do this. I'm going to show you that you can forecast price action. You can get it wrong sometimes and still be right more times than not. And I want you to trust that you have everything in you to be able to do this. You just need to be guided, that's all. You need to be shown what to focus on, what not to focus on. Find a way to be disciplined. Repeat these same things over and over again. And the results, cumulatively, over the year, you will see is profitable. I am not saying profitable in terms of money. You're learning your experience in understanding how to read price, it will be profitable. You will have more understanding than you have right now. And it will be an encouragement to you. And it will help you combat future anxiety. Because there will be times where the market's going to get shitty. This year, we could potentially go into a period where it gets really, really, really hard. And that's great, because that means I'm going to teach you in that environment. And if you can find setups in that when the salad days comes, when it's easy days trading, that's what I mean by that, where it just falls into your favor so fast and you see the setups coming a mile away, you get in it, take a trade, and it just runs away right perfectly like you want it to, like yesterday when I showed you the real end of my injuries. <laughs> and the market just doop, took off. Funny how that iceberg quarter was in there, Patrick, at the same time I called out the actual high one-minute candle, and you mentioned the iceberg. Cool how that worked, didn't it? <laughs> Dump right to where we were looking for. So you'll see. I have a lot of magic tricks to share. You'll, you'll enjoy this year, I promise you. But that's going to be it for this one. I went a little bit longer than I wanted to, but I know some of you really like these long ones. Most of you really don't like these long ones, but some of you really like them. And the ones that love it, that's the one I'm catering to. <laughs> but anyway... Uh, that's going to be it for this one. I will touch base with you, obviously, by way of Twitter on Monday, Lord willing. And till then, enjoy the rest of your weekend and be safe.